Good morning, Trina. Good to have you. Hope you and the family are doing well. You and Brother Troy hanging in there. To all the children. Good to have you, sis. Starlight, good morning to you, Jess. Welcome to our morning prayer session. This is the day. This is the week that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be very, very, very glad in all of it. Hallelujah. So Miss Smiley, good morning to you. Good to have you. Welcome to our morning prayer line. Wait for a few more to join here. Mary Banks, there she is. Good morning to you, sis. Praying for you and all the children, the grandchildren. Good to have you. Michael, Michael Cool is in the house. We want to thank you. Taboo1987 for joining us this morning for morning prayer. T Fool, I see you. Thank you. If you want to stick around, you more, you're more than happy to do so as we get ready for morning prayer. Keisha. Mona Rash, welcome to our morning prayer session. You're welcome to join us and stick around and, and pray with us. Tally, Big P. Everybody's just scrolling this morning. People are up. People are up. And they're trying to see what to listen to but well, we're going to pray we're going to pray I'm going to start this morning by reading the word of the Lord um, I, I preached from this message or from this particular passage last night in our uh, Sunday live session if you missed our Sunday live session um, I will try to have it available to you on the YouTube by Tuesday I have so many others to upload but you can find last night's message on Facebook it's on Facebook um, I go live on Facebook I go live on TikTok simultaneously so if you missed last night's message good morning sister Maggie you can go to Facebook same name same uh, <clears throat> picture of me and my wife you'll be able to find us and good morning to you Lenore Brother Sean, Lisa, welcome this morning. Ronald and Dari is here. Melinda, Nana, Bridget, so good to have you. Miss J, welcome to our morning prayer. Teen is here, or Tian, I may have pronounced that wrong. Thank you for joining us. Really, really glad to have you. And then I got Shauna and Melvin probably riding to work right now as we speak. Sammy, all the way from New Jersey, good morning to you. Welcome to morning prayer. Here's what John chapter 15 says in its entirety. And I won't try to re-preach what I pro re uh, spoke last night or taught last night, but this is what it says and from the living Bible. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He lops off every branch that doesn't produce. He, father, he looks at people's hearts and says, you're not producing. And so in the end, He's going to be cutting off different parts of the, the, <laughs> the branch. He prunes those branches that bear fruit, though. If you're bearing fruit, he's going to make you a little bit nicer, a little bit tighter, a little bit more polished. He has already tended to you by pruning you back for greater strength and usefulness. You thought that those trials came to hurt you. You thought that everybody was being mean to you. You don't know, don't know why life is fair. You don't understand the abuse. He said, I'm... I pruned you already so you can be used for greater strength. You wouldn't even be as strong as you are right now if you hadn't gone through what you've gone through. Take care to live in me and let me live in you for a branch cannot produce fruit when it's severed from the vine. Everybody knows the moment you cut a tree branch off or even a stem from a flower off, it starts to die. It starts to lose its, its beauty. Even beautiful roses can only last so long cut from the vine. 
it, it you can put it in a vase, a vase, put a little of that powder in there that I give you, and it may it might last, but it will not last forever without the vine. No branch can produce fruit severed from the vine, nor can you be fruitful apart from me. Listen, if you're trying to do life on your own, if you're trying to find patience on your own, strength on your own, if you're trying to love people all by yourself, you're going to fail every time. You're going to cuss them out every time. You're going to go off every time. You're going to get frustrated every time. You're going to get triggered every time. You cannot do life away from God. You cannot have a conversation with people away from God. It's always inside, keeping him in the center. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him shall produce a large crop of fruit. At some point in your life, you are moving closer and closer to the Lord and you have more patience, more love. You're more faithful. You have more self-control. There's Sister Liz, everybody. Good morning to her. Whoever lives in me and I in them shall produce a large crop of fruit for apart from me, again, you can't do nothing. If anyone separates from me, he is thrown into, he is thrown away like a useless branch with us and is gathered into a pile for all others to, and, and burn. He's talking about the end of the world here or when your life ends, whichever one comes first. If you make a decision not to follow after the Lord, separate from him you make a decision a cognitive decision not to follow him that's twice now he's giving the fate the fate of those who choose not to follow him verse 7 but if you stay in me and obey my commands you may ask any request you like and it will be granted if you stay in me and obey my commands and last night what i explained is that Everyone says I'm a Christian. Everyone says I stay in the Lord. Everyone says I pray. Brother Ken, I was baptized. I was I spoke in tongues, Brother Ken. I went to church, Brother Ken. My heart loves God. But the Father says, here's what distinguishes you. This is what distinguishes us from the rest of the world. This is the narrow path right here. Listening to the voice of God and obeying the voice of God. I would tell you that 57 trillion people, how many people is it on the earth? 75 trillion people listen to God's voice. Every last one of them, the Bible says that the word of God is now in man's heart. That God gives people the ability to know right from wrong because Christ just died on the cross. You can't explain it. It's, it's just spiritual. But they've made a decision not to follow him. They've made a decision not to obey him. This is what he talks about right here. If you obey my commands, we talked about about eight or nine commands last night, maybe more than that, that are in the New Testament. Follow me, love people, pick up your cross, forgive people who, who hurt you. Like he, he told us what to do. How about this one? Love people, not like you love you, not how you want to be loved, but love people the way that I love them. That's a new command that he gave us. If you follow these commandments, you can ask me for anything. Now, I go down a list every morning sometimes, not every morning, maybe once every week, once a week, maybe twice a week. I tell you the four things that you must do that you cannot have against you to get your prayers ordered. Or I said prayers ordered, prayers answered. Four, I say them regularly. You all probably know them by now. Now I'm going to add a fifth one. based on John chapter 15 to get your prayers answered you gotta follow through on his commands the New Testament commands not the, it's not Old Testament commands these are just the things he told us to do love people like I love them have mercy on people the way that I have mercy on them like that's the difference so before we can even go into prayer today I'm going to ask you that you have to get in a posture. You got to get in a place. You, this is not about going and reconciling and inviting them to your home. It's a heart position where you say, I see them the way that the Lord sees them with mercy and with grace. They're mean and ugly, but I see them the way the Lord sees them with mercy and grace. He woke them up this morning. He loves them enough to give them another chance. He's waiting. I gave the analogy last night. I can't put my phone down and maybe talk at the same time. 
but you, everybody knows the posture you do when you put two hands out for a little baby. And he said, oh, come here, come on, come to daddy, come to daddy, come on, come on to mommy, come to auntie. And we stick those hands out, come on, come to grandma, come on, Shauna, you, you know this gesture, everybody who has a little grandbaby, you put those hands out. That's what the father does every morning, all day long, to his people that he created. Every morning, he reaches out. His love, he reaches out. He, oh, this is so good. He reaches out every morning and extends his hand of fellowship to everyone. Now, whether mankind chooses to take it, that's on mankind. But he still loves them. He's waiting on them. And then he tells us, follow this new commandment. This new commandment will let me know whether or not you're a Christian. I don't care what you tell me. Okay, what you put in these comments this morning? This is how I know if you're a Christian. You would know them by their fruit. They will produce much fruit. Well, what's, what fruit is that? Come here. I love you anyway. Come on. I know you hurt me. I know you cussed me out last week. Come on, I love you. Come on, I know my name is in your mouth with everybody you talk to. Come on. I know y'all trying to get me on the job, trying to sabotage me, but come on, I love you anyway. Come on, I know that you're sitting there waiting to find something wrong with me, but come on, I love you anyway. Hands out, hands out, I love you. Follow my commands and then you can ask me anything you want. Here are the other four. You can't have any unforgiveness in your heart. I guess that's very close to this one, loving people. Some of y'all say, I forgive them, but I don't like them. Well, then you, you're not going to get your prayers answered. Because you got to be sitting there saying, come on, I like you anyway. Come on, I'm waiting on you to turn your heart. They may never turn their heart. They may never ask you for forgiveness. They may never get to a place where they're ready to reconcile with you. But the Holy Spirit's telling us this morning, your heart should always be at the door knocking. Because he stands at the door knocking for you. He waited on you. Every last one of us who are now real Christians. I can talk to the real Christians for a second. He waited on us, didn't he? Didn't he go out of his way to forgive us of our sins and look past all the stuff we did? Don't, don't we serve, a, serve the almighty sovereign God who looked past my faults, saw my need. And all he ever asked us to do was to love people the same way. I am pretty sure of this. I don't have any evidence. I haven't made it to heaven yet. But I'm pretty sure that there'll be nobody in heaven who doesn't like people. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure, Verda May, if you're out there, there won't be anybody in heaven who wasn't patient and kind to his people, his creation. He made them. Have you ever have you ever had somebody mistreat your kids? For those who have pets, somebody be mean to your pet, kick your pet, push your pet, push your kids. How frustrated are you with people when you find out somebody messed with your kids, was mean to your kids, were unkind to your kids? Whether your kids was right or wrong, and sometimes people's kids are wrong. <laughs> For all the educators out there, you know sometimes these kids can be mean, but it still hurts a parent. Like, I know he did wrong, but that don't mean you get to, to talk to my son that way. I know my son messed up, but that doesn't mean you get to, to be unkind to him, be impatient with him. God is saying to us this morning, I know my creation messes up, but you don't get to be ugly to them. Miss Shea, good morning to you. I, I know that my creation can be, be hard to live with sometimes, hard to love. But that doesn't give you a right to treat my kids wrong, says the Lord. They're my kids. They're my creation. They're made in my image, not yours. So who are you to put your mouth on my children? When another, when another one of his commandments was don't be critical towards people. Don't judge people. This is the measurement of whether or not you are a real Christian. That's the fruit. Your love towards people. Your, hey, come on. A constant posture of waiting for someone to come to you. And I said this last night in the close, and I'll say it now as we go into prayer. 
If you got somebody that you don't like, somebody you can't stand, it's okay. God is not here to condemn you either because you're his children. (laughs) He wants you to work on it. He wants you to love people. He said it right here in verse 7. You can add, once you get to that place where you've obeyed this command to just love everybody, then your prayers will get answered. I am a firm believer again that many of our prayers are not answered. We don't love people. And Satan knows this. Satan knows the scripture. He knows we come here every morning for prayer. He understands from the demons who report back to him that we've been walled off again. We get walled off every morning. Satan can't be in these prayer meetings. Shout out to all the people on TikTok who's praying, reading scripture. May the Lord bless all of us. May the Lord's anointing be on every last person who's on this morning trying to share the gospel. And what attracts one person may not attract the other. And so we thank God for everybody. I'm so grateful that the word of God is going out strong this morning on, on the TikTok. But I'm convinced of this, regardless of where you scroll to, wherever you go to next, whoever you think may may tickle your ear the best, if you don't love people, it, it don't matter who you watch. It doesn't matter. You have to get to a place. Lord, I thank you for revelation knowledge. I thank you for your word. You got to get to this place right here where your hands are out. Come on. Because that's how he sees his people. Here's the good news. I'm going to jump over to verse 26 and then we're going to pray. Thank you for giving me 16 minutes of devotion this morning before we go into prayer. Verse 26 of chapter 15. And then again, he says the same thing in verse uh, 7 of chapter 16. These two are parallel. You probably could even take chapter 16 off chapter 16 and it'd be one, one long verse, one long chapter 15 because he said it all the same breath. But he says in verse 26 and verse 7 of the following chapter that you can't do any of this love thing without his Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm going to send you Holy Spirit. His name is Ruish Hakadesh in Hebrew. That's the words. That's how it sounded when he was talking to the people. If we were sitting there in, 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 in those circles with Yeshua, he, we would hear this word often, Ruish Hakadesh, Ruish Hakadesh. I'm sending comforter, Ruish Hakadesh. Ruish Hakadesh would remind you of all things. Well, I do need a reminder to love people. I need a reminder that they were made in his image. I need a reminder that I need to have my hands out. I need to have a reminder that I need to be patient. I need a reminder of the fruit of the spirit to have some self-control and I lose it on you. I need a reminder from the Holy Spirit what love looks like. I need a reminder that in all things is as possible as within me to be at peace with all people. I need a reminder that blessed are the peacemakers for they're the ones who are really the children of God. I need a reminder that blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I need that reminder to turn the other cheek. I need a reminder Holy Spirit to bless those who curse you. I need a reminder not to resist evil but flee, let it just, whatever, it's all good. I'm not going to fight back. I'm not going to resist. I'm not going to give you a piece of my mind because the Holy Spirit is reminding me to do this. Come on. I know you're hurting. Come on. I know what you just said is because you're in a really bad place. Come on. I love you. I love you. I love you. I don't know why that sounds like Kermit the Frog. I love you. Hallelujah. We're going to prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you so much for loving us, for being patient with us, for being our example of what mercy everlasting looks like. You said your mercy endures forever. And we should be modeling mercy that endures forever. We come to you this morning asking you to help us love people. Look, before we can even get into prayer and ask for about our children and our jobs, our finances and our health, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. 
standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me. I need help loving people. There's people that make me mad, Lord. There's people who trigger me, people who frustrate me in my own home. The ones closest to me. I need help this morning. Come on, somebody. I need help. Sister L, good to have you. Sister Haskins, good to have you. It's me, Lord. I'm on, yeah, I'm, I come boldly to the throne of grace. Watch this, so I can get more grace and mercy. So I can show that grace and mercy to other people. Lord, help me this morning to love to see them as this little child who's hurting. Help me, Lord, to see them the way that you see them. You said a new commandment I give you to love people the way that I love them. That's what a patience that wakes every morning for them to turn their heart. It's not mean, it's not cruel, it's not ugly. Lord, help me. Come on, is that your prayer this morning? Before we go pray for anybody else, before we can go ask God to help us help somebody else, you can ask me anything. You can ask anything. Just obey my commands. A new commandment I give you. Love people the way that I love them. Lord, if there's anybody, I mean anybody, and I'm just a little, just even a little, don't want to talk to them no more. And I'm not talking about being around toxic people. We use that as a mask. We use that as an excuse. That's fine. You don't have to be around them right now. But I pray that your heart has your hands out waiting on them. And that you have not walled off and closed off God's people. That you're always in a position. That's the prayer right now. You are always in a position with your hands out ready for God's people. That's my prayer. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Thank you for loving us and showing us what this looks like. Forgive me. Come on. Just real quick. Get it right. Lord, forgive me. Sometimes I don't like the people you make. Can you be honest with the Lord this morning? He's not going to answer your prayers if you're not going to be honest with him. Lord, this husband of mine, I just sometimes don't like him at all. I don't even want him around me. No, we got to get to that place of, man, I feel bad for him. I have some compassion. I have the same compassion that the Lord has. The Lord is sitting up in heaven every morning looking at your husband saying, come on. Maybe today is the day that you come to daddy. Come to daddy. He is so patient with your husbands. He's kind. He hasn't punished them yet. He doesn't say mean things, sarcastic things. He doesn't raise his voice at your husbands. He doesn't go back and forth with your husbands, your wives, your sons and daughters. This is the God we serve that says, love people the way that I love them. Well, how do you love them? I sit back. I don't say anything. I don't force myself on them. I don't try to control the, the situation, the narrative. This is how I love people. I love people in a way that just, okay, do you. And when you're ready, I'm here. Come on. Before we can get anywhere. Prayer team, I see you out there. Thank you for joining us. I need you praying for the people. Maybe you're even praying for yourself this morning as we go before the Lord. And say, God, before we ask you for anything, get my heart right. Because some of the people you put down on this earth, God, even the people closest to me, I can't stand them sometimes. Come on, be honest with God this morning, DD. Good morning. Come on. I'm not praying until I know we're there. Angela, good morning to you. Come on, come on. Say so this, this is personal. You don't have to put anything in the comments. This is just you and the Lord talking right now. Brother Ken's in the background of your head as you're talking to the Lord. Lord, show me everybody in my life that I don't like. Show me everybody in my life I've distanced myself from. 
Show me everybody in my life, Lord, that I don't want to talk to. Show me everybody in my life that gets on my nerves. Show me everybody, Lord, that bothers me. I don't want to be around them. I'm not trying to be over there with them. Lord, show me everybody in my life that I just don't want to put up with. Show me this morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Krista. Show me, Father. Because I want to be close to you. I want to be able to have my prayers answered. I want to be able to be in good fellowship with you. And I understand this morning, John chapter 15 said, I cannot be in good standing with you if I don't like your people. I need help. Holy Spirit, I need a good morning to you. I need help. I'm being honest, Lord. I need help. I don't know what to say sometimes. Sometimes I don't say nothing at all. I need my heart right. Whether I have the right words to say, I, I need to see them the way you see them. Sister Sonia, good morning to you. Lisa, good morning. God help us. If you're just now joining us, I spent the first 16 minutes reading from John chapter 15. I just kind of recapped last night's message. If you missed last night's message, it's on Facebook. I don't have it on YouTube yet. It's on Facebook. You can go watch it. And he said, you can ask me anything you want. Anything. Anything. He says, just obey my commands. But what's your command? I'm going to give you a new commandment. Love people the way that I love them. Like, genuinely like people. Like, don't push anybody off. Don't give anyone the cold shoulder. Quit being sarcastic. People quit talking about people. Like, have mercy towards people. Like, give people thousands of chances. 70 times 70. Like, that's how I want you to love people. You don't get to put up walls. You don't get to say, well, I don't want to be around them. They're toxic. You should have a heart that says, I love you. I'm waiting for you. My hands are out like a little baby that we're trying to get to come to us. Come on to daddy. Because that's what he's doing daily. That's what he's doing. That's our prayer. Andre, heart posture. God already knows. There's no emergency to God, whatever you're going through. It's right here. It's a heart posture towards loving Gina. It's a heart posture towards people who have put us in a position that hurt that hurt us. And do you understand this whole walk we're on? It's not about us being happy. It's not about us getting through life unscathed. This whole thing we call faith is about you becoming more and more holy. He said, I'm going to give you the fruit of the spirit so you can be patient with people, love people, be kind to people, be faithful towards people, be, have some self-control around people. He said, those who live in me will produce a big, large crop of fruit. A large crop of fruit. Lord, help us to produce even more love towards people who do not love us back. Help us to be joyous around people who have no joy. Lord, help us to be at peace around people who are unpeaceful. Help us to be patient, more patience, a crop full, a big old harvest of patience, Lord. When there's times we don't want to be patient. Help us to have a, a full crop, I mean a harvest of kindness towards people who are unkind. Lord, help us to still do the right thing, do good things when everybody else around us is doing bad things. Help us, Lord, to have a crop full of faithfulness, just to remain true, remain faithful when everybody else around us is not faithful. Help us to have a crop full of gentleness that when we're triggered, we're, we remain gentle. When people say very mean things to us, Dee Dee, we remain gentle. We need a crop full. I mean our harvest. And Lord, give us self-control. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. John chapter 15 is Yahshua saying that you will produce much fruit. If you stay in me, if you live by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Didi said gentle. Lou, good morning to you. Barbara, great to have you all. 
Black, I see you out there this morning. I'll wait five more minutes. I'm going to let you talk to the Lord quietly, privately between you and the Lord. Just here's the prayer this morning before we go into praying for everybody and everything else. Lord, show me who I kind of don't like. I'm being honest with you. Lord, I'm going to come as honest as I know how. These are the people. I'm going to give you a list. Lord, I'm going to give you a list. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is right now reminding you. These are people I don't want to talk to. These are the people I really don't care for. We say that often. I really don't care for them. Come on, just call a spade a spade. You don't like them. I don't like them at all. I don't like what they do, what they say. I don't like them. And it's okay to like this, dislike the sin. But the person, your arms should always be out. Because his arms are always out. Three more minutes. We're going to move on. Brother Perry, good to have you. Saw Sister L on already. Two more minutes. Come on. Just talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, help me. And listen, if you had a, there's no condemnation. If you need help, that's fine. You can stick around and listen to prayer. He'll help you. Just don't stop trying. Don't stop climbing the mountain. Don't stop pursuing excellence. Don't stop pressing toward the mark of a higher calling. If you got to come here every day and say, Lord, help me to love these people again. I got I to gotta go to work. I got I to gotta go to work. And deal with these people. Help me. That's a great prayer. That is an honest prayer. He's looking for honesty. Integrity. He's looking for somebody who's real. Keep it real with the father. Father, I need help today with these people on my job. I need help today dealing with my ex. I need help today dealing with my husband. Soon to be my ex. I need help today with my wife. Like whatever your prayer is, be honest. He already knows your heart anyway, so why try to fake him out? You sitting there acting as if you you like everybody and you are, you know, so polished and deep down inside. God's like, I already know your heart. You don't like that person. Why are you playing games? Why are you lying to everybody? Just say it so I can help you already. Because I cannot answer your prayers. I cannot. I will not. I cannot answer your prayers. Verse 7. I cannot. Can't answer your prayers. Really good to have you in the family this morning. I'll lead you into forgiveness prayer and then we're going to move on. Father, continue to reveal to us the people that we don't like. The people that really hurt us. The people that we've now kind of put on that list. So don't ever bother me again. I'm fine if I don't ever talk to you. Lord, show us our heart forgive us of sin that sin forgive me for sinning I don't like people that's a sin I don't like their ways come on you know what you're saying you know what you're really saying because you should always be available you should always have arms out Lord forgive me and help me to have my arms out help me this morning to have my arms extended. Some of you are really wondering why you haven't hit that next plateau. Perhaps you're holding your whole family back because you don't like people. But perhaps you aren't where you need to be because your 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 heart toward people is walls. Listen to the Holy Spirit this morning. Grow, grow already. Let's go. Come on. Let's grow up. If Paul was here, he'd say, what is this I hear about you all? We've been Christian for 20 years. I would expect for us to have grown by now. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, may your spirit move in this room right now to love them, to love people. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. All right. Welcome to our morning prayer line. I'll do a quick announcement. We will not have prayer tomorrow morning. Me and the wife will be traveling early in the morning tomorrow. And so we won't be able to get on here and, and pray. We'll pick up morning prayers on Wednesday. We will have class tomorrow night. 
Uh, we'll have class tomorrow night, but first thing in the morning, we will not uh, have prayer. Father, send whoever you want to send this morning. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Lord, give us today our daily bread. Lord, please forgive us of any of our sins and trespasses. Lord, we'll be sure to forgive people who sin and trespass against us. Lead us not into any temptations. Deliver us from evil. If you got a prayer request, put it in the comments. I'm going to scroll back up high, uh, uh, a little bit to see where the prayers began. We have a prayer team here of about 40, 50 people. And all they want to do is pray for you. You put your prayer request in the comments. They're going to start praying they're, they're right there in their, their prayer closets. And then I'll be praying out loud as the Holy Spirit gives it to me. I might pray 10 seconds for you. I may pray two minutes for you. It's all the same. The Holy Spirit is the one who's listening, helping us utter these things back to the Father. Our prayers sit at the altar of God or in the, these bowls as the Revelation is described of some of the angels holding them. And they're before the Lord. He says, you can ask me anything, anything. Ask me. I dare you. Just make sure your heart is right. Make sure there's no unforgiveness of sin. Make sure you don't have any lingering uh, sin in your life. So unforgiveness, sin in your life. Make sure that you truly believe that what we're asking for is going to happen. You got you to gotta have faith to believe it's going to happen. You can't ask God for things outside of his will. And then what we studied today and last night. You got to like people. You knew these things. Your prayers are probably going to be answered. All right. First prayer request this morning. Sherry K. Well, let me scroll up a little bit higher. There may be something before that. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for everyone who's here. And again, we bless all of the folks that are live this morning, preaching or sharing the word of the Lord. We encourage them and ask the Holy Spirit that they would that he would use them in the way that attracts the right people. I don't care if it's Brother Ken or the other three or four people that you just saw. I just want the Holy Spirit to touch everybody. We're all, we all should be saying the same thing. We should all be pulling people in the direction of God. Andre said his grandma was in hospice. I don't know where grandma's faith is. I don't know what she believes, but we pray on behalf of Andre and the entire family that he would have some peace about the situation. That nothing's impossible for the Lord. Like hospice is nothing to the Lord. Lord can reverse it. Lord can extend life. Lord can give peace in the situation. So my prayer for you, brother Andre, and for everybody in your family is that the Lord would give you peace. And that grandma knows the Lord and that you all would love on her and give her uh, uh, the support that she needs. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 said he would supply all your needs. That includes love and patience and comfort. So Lord, go go see about Andre's grandmother. And then on November 1st, Lord, he needs favor in court. Lord, he needs favor with the judge, the court system, the lawyers, Lord, to see that there was an error, there was a mistake, that these are these are false charges, these are drummed up charges. This is a woman scorned. Lord, we need your assistance on November first. Help Dre to have patience, to have self control, and allow you to handle this. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. We lift up Gina, Lord, that she, her heart is right on November 1st. Lord, that you would compel her heart to be honest, to tell the truth. Lord, allow the judge and the lawyers to see through the lies and that the truth would come out on both sides. Everything, Andre, everything has to be discoverable. What she said, what you said, what you did, what she did. And may the Lord and his integrity, his honesty, his ethics, his morals rule in the favor of those kids do the right thing by the kids Shante good morning to you I don't know if I say good morning to you Maria Rebecca 
someone named Food is in the comments, Robin. Her name is Robin Nelson. Have mercy today, Lord. Let's lift Robin up. Robin, I don't know if you're still here. Robin, are you still here? She said her son was unalive last month and that's, she's having a hard time. Of course she should. Anyone dealing with loss is having a hard time. Anyone who's having to go through that pain. I don't know if she's here or not, but we lift her up, God. We ask that you would give her peace. All things still work together for good. God did not orchestrate or uh, he'll never be the, the source of sin or the source of evil. Evil was already here. It's in mankind. But he sees the bigger picture. And if he allowed it, as hurtful as it is, sister, and this is the part where people don't tell the truth in the pulpits. This is the part where we got to preach it and help people. It's going to work out for good somehow. I don't know how. I don't see it. I, I, I don't have insight. He has the insight. So I pray for everybody going through a loss this morning. Everyone who had a loved one unalived. I pray for everyone in this room who, who had something terrible happen to them. They were abused or they, they had some misunderstanding with somebody who took something out on them. Like everybody, everybody who had something hurtful happen to them. Our prayer for you is that the Lord gives you peace and comfort. That you see the big picture at some point. That we get past the hurt. We get past the feelings. In your own timing, no rush. You get past the grief, the loneliness, the pain, the anxieties, the denial. You get past these things and then put your trust in the Lord. After we put all these emotions on the, on the grill, we take those emotions off the grill and then we put trust on the grill. And we turn it all the way up and we let that thing cook. Father, that's my prayer for Sister Robin Nelson. That's my prayer for everybody in this room who says, God, I'm still hurting. God, I don't know how to deal with this. Lord, I'm having a hard time with this situation. Lord, I need you to bring me out. And he said, I'll do that. I'll give you peace. I said this a while ago. I don't know if I finished my thought. The enemy knows. The enemy knows that he can keep us away from God. He, he knows that he can perhaps keep our prayers from being answered. He knows he can he maybe even keep some of y'all from going to heaven by making sure you don't like people, by making sure things like abuse and unaliving and, and hurt happen to you. He, he knows this. This is his number one tactic. Ask Adam and Eve, ask Cain and Abel, ask Noah and his son, ask the, the 12 sons of, of Israel what, what disagreements do to a family, what hurting one another does to a family. And he knows that once you can, he can get it in your heart to not like somebody, you have a likelihood of not make it to heaven. He knows that once he can get you to hate somebody, not like somebody, he's done his job. He can move on to the next family member, move on to your sons, move on to your daughters. Oh, we already got mom and daddy. They hate each other. They can't stand one another. Now let me work on these kids and get these kids arguing with each other and have them same spirit to hate each other, never talk to each other again. Now you got sisters in their 30s and 40s not want to talk to each other. Same spirit, I rebuke this spirit. Satan knows. That's the prayer this morning. He knows if he can get you not to like somebody, his job is done. And he moves on to the next person. Red versus blue. We dislike people because of their causes, their stance, their opinions, their values. We just don't have nothing to do with them. Have mercy today. Have mercy today. I should be able to be in the same room with you. We don't agree on the same stuff and I still want to love you, hug you, talk to you, ask you about your kids. Because love covers a multitude. It puts up with. Love, I, this is so hard for some people to hear because it's the opposite of what they want to do. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you the Bible. I'm just telling you the truth. Sammy said, I have to forgive him. This is the second time on the live I felt convicted to forgive my father. 
It's not, and I, I don't even like using the word conviction. I call it love. God loves you enough, Sammy, to show you that the way you're going to make it to heaven is to love your father, forgive your father, have your arms out for your father. Satan's very, very cunning. He's very slick. He'll have you mad at somebody all the time, mad at coaches, teachers, co-workers, mad at your neighbor, mad at your mama. He'll, he'll get you to a place where you, you just don't like nobody. And Satan's like, got him. Got him. We're done. They're going to have that hate in their heart for a long time. Let's move on to the next person. And God is saying, if you want to be called my, follow me. Take up your cross daily. What did he do on the cross? I know I'm back on this. I, maybe the Holy Spirit is really ministering from last night. What did he do on that cross? What did he do on his way to the cross? Was he triggered? Did he, did he say anything back? Or did he just take it? Oh, I can hear some of y'all right now. Brother Ken can't just take everything. He was the example, not you. You're not the example of what's right. You're not the example of what's wrong. He's the example. You didn't write the word he did. Who are you to tell God what following him looks like? Be a Christian already. Follow him. Don't say nothing. May the Lord give you the strength, the self-discipline, the faithfulness, the kindness, the patience to not lose it, to not escalate a situation. May you feel the Holy Spirit inside of you saying, don't do it, don't say it, don't say it, let it go, don't do it. Uh -uh. Shh, 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 shh. Come on, you got this. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you Holy Spirit telling you, I'm going to give you strength. Come on, come on, come on. Uh uh, don't walk out, walk out. Just leave it alone, leave it alone. Oh, Father, may we really have Holy Spirit living inside of us and not just play these games with you. All right, next prayer request. Sister Jen said, please pray for my shoulder and my neck. Jen, if you would lay your hands right now on your shoulder, neck, or combination thereof, and I'm going to say a prayer of healing faith. I just believe that the power of God is in this room. I believe that some of us, including myself, have the gift of healing, and the Lord uses these gifts as he sees fit. It's not always an automatic God knows people's hearts, their journey. He knows what they need. He knows their building blocks, their perseverance. And so we still pray the prayer of faith. I believe right now in the name of Yeshua, as you're laying hands on your neck and shoulder, that the muscles, the tension, uh, the nerves, uh, the tissue, any inflammation right now, that it would go. Come on, lay your hands there and believe with me. The Bible says where two or three people believe that something is going to happen. It's going to happen. He says, you can ask me anything. Just obey my commands. Jen, if you're obeying the commands of the Lord, loving people, and you believe in your heart that this prayer works, then may that tension leave. May the inflammation leave. Lord, may it flow out of her lymphatic system. May her immune system, her white blood cells go and, and activate and heal whatever is sore. Lord, if she slept wrong, Lord, if it's just some arthritis or whatever it may be, God, I don't know. I'm not speaking it on her. I'm asking you. Heal her in the name of Yeshua. Verda, may you are out there. Good morning to you. Lord, bless all these teachers. Lord, I know they can't wait to get the Thanksgiving break. I know they've had a, a very long nine weeks, 10 weeks of school already, 11 weeks maybe for some. Bless the kids and the teachers, Lord, to get to Thanksgiving break. We're about three weeks out. Verda, you can hold on, can't you, just a little bit longer. Lord, bless Verda's classroom. Bless all the classrooms of children and moms and dads and grandmas represented here this morning. Bless all the classrooms of those who are in college, and professors, Lord, with our students, with our, our children. So they need a blessing too. We pray for all of our athletes in this room, all of our scholars, those who are on academic teams, sports teams, in the band. We pray for everybody. As as you bless them in their extracurricular activity, that they have the strength mentally and emotionally to do the schoolwork 
and then all the extra stuff. It's a lot on a young person, a lot on them mentally and emotionally, Lord. Help them to get through it. Help us as parents to be patient and loving. Shelly Freeman said, I pray that my heart reflects Jesus' love today. I come in agreement with that. Lord, help Shelly to be patient. Now, let me tell you something, Shelly, what you just asked for. When you say, Lord, help me to reflect a heart that's like you. Well, then you know how they treated him. Go read, again, read all of John chapter 15 if you get a chance today on your lunch break. Spend your lunch break reading John chapter 15. Can y'all do that for me? Go back and read John chapter 15 on your lunch break. They say, he said in John chapter 15, they hated me. Look how they treated me. But look how I loved them. They hated me first. So of course they're going to hate people who follow me. You're not going to have everybody on your side. You're not going to have supporters. If you got supporters all around you, I would question that. If all the world, I'm talking about the world, if all the world loves you, that's suspect. He said they're supposed to hate you. Well, why? I, I don't understand. I, I do people right and they do me wrong. Quit being surprised. Quit it. He said they're going to hate you. I don't understand why people just so ugly. Quit being surprised. You're a child of God. You're going to get all kind of hate. He said, but be of good cheer. We already won. We already overcame all this. You already in heaven somewhere in the future. And you win. You win. You win. That is so, that's such good hope to look forward to. We win anyway. I don't care how bad you treat me. I win. That's why I don't get triggered. That's why I'm not overwhelmed. That's why I'm getting, I'm getting to that place. Brother King, it's not perfect. But I'm getting to that place that I can recognize, wait a minute, this is not worth the fight. Nope. Not doing it. Lord, thank you for your patience inside of me. Fix it quickly. Fix it quickly. Don't let the sun go down. Nope, I'm good. Sherry K, I'm fine at your prayer request. She said, unspoken prayer request this morning, please, and thank you. Lord, I, I lift up all the unspoken prayer request in this room. Everybody who's sitting there with, without the opportunity, perhaps you can't put it in the chat due to you driving or you're at work already, or you just want to keep it between you and God. Lord, you know this prayer request. You said they can ask you for anything. Lord, I come asking on behalf of these unspoken that you go see about them. Fix it, heal them, deliver them, set them free, reset the buttons, God. Lord, allow them the opportunity to heal. Help them to start over. Lord, allow them to get an answer. Lord, re 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 rescue them from their pain, their hurt, the misunderstandings, the mistreatment. Rescue them, Lord, from situations with their, their, their money, their health, the finances, Lord, their relationships. All unspoken. You're sitting there saying, I got a prayer request. I'm not going to put it in the comments, but the Lord know my heart. We'll go see about everybody who you know their heart. In the name of Yeshua. Betty said continue prayers for her, her, her son Sean. Continue keeping him in prayer. Six months. Hallelujah. Karen, I don't know if you're out there. I owe you a phone call today. Be looking out for a phone call for me. I think Karen is 10 days now. Free from Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Keep this young man, Sean, free. Lord, put the right people around him, Lord. Lord, change his heart posture because it's a heart that's after God that's going to keep him free. Lord, we ask that whatever was underneath the addictions, there's always something that took you there, that pushed you there, that you said, oh, well. Lord, whatever that was, I pray that he's healed from that that he's delivered from that thing, the thing that frustrated him, the thing that broke him, the thing that kind of, again, triggered him. I pray that he's free from it. And some of you are like, well, I'm not addicted to no drug. Were you addicted to anger? You're triggered. And maybe your trigger doesn't produce you going and doing something that you shouldn't be doing, but it triggers you to escalate the whole situation and everything around you falls apart. Perhaps, perhaps when you... You get overwhelmed instead of going to this, you go to this. 
You go to a phone call, you want to tell everybody your business and their business. You got an addiction. You got an addiction in, in how you handle things. You don't handle things properly. Again, going back to the very first thing we prayed about. Love. And if you can find it in your heart to not let that thing break you, not let that thing bother you. I think last week we prayed a prayer. Lord, help me to be unbothered. Lord, help me to be unbothered. Holy Spirit, help me to not even care. Why are you so invested in what other people do, what other people say, how other people hurt you? Tell some of the people that I'm close to and when we talk privately, I have to remind us all or remind myself, Lord, help me not to be so emotionally invested into what this person done to me. Help me to pull back that investment emotionally. I still love you. I still care for you. I still want the Lord bless you, but you're not going to make me ever cry another tear again because I'm taking that back. Yeah, you did something to me when I was a kid. And now that I remember it or uh, I see you, uncle, I just want God to, to love you, bless you, heal you. I have no ill will against you. Those husbands and wives that can't seem to just figure it out. praying for you. I am. I'm asking Holy Spirit. We got people in this room right now waiting on their husbands to come back, waiting on their wives to come back. We got other people in this room who can't wait for their husbands and wives to leave. I'm praying for all of you. I'm asking Holy Spirit to, again, show you what mercy looks like. I'm asking the Holy Spirit right now to reveal to you through Holy Spirit Ruish Hakadesh the mercy he has shown you. Nobody in this room deserves to wake up this morning. His grace said, I'm going to look past everything you've ever done and all the stuff you're going to do. And I'm still going to give you a chance. I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, that our hearts will be warm. With, with a second chance, a third chance, a fifth chance for people, a 100th chance for people, a 1,000th chance for people. How many times do I got to forgive them? 70 times seven a day. So if your husband says something to you, you forgive him. And he says something else to you later on, you forgive him. And then he does something else that just really irks you. Forgive you're not even close, you're not even at 10 yet. And he says something else, does something else, didn't take the trash out, left something around the house, says some ignorant. 490 times today. Do you what number is your husband on? What what number is Gene on? What hus, what numbers is people on in your life? How many grievances do you have against your boss, your co-workers? Have they reached 490 yet? Oh, Brother Ken, they didn't reach 490. Okay, well, then they get a new 490 today and a new 490 tomorrow and a new 490 on Wednesday. Your mama ain't done 490 things against you today, maybe in your lifetime. The Bible says that we are to let these things go and not be bothered by them. I don't know why I keep coming back to this. Holy Spirit's pushing me, pushing you pushing all of us to be better Christians. Ken, everybody says they're Christian, but they're not. They're really not. And I love people enough, Ken, to, to share with them the realization that it's about love. Ken, everybody in the whole world will tell that they, they're evangelical, that they love people, but they sit in places where there is no love. And people are spouting things that's the opposite of love. Love never hurts anybody. Love never says anything hurtful. Love never pushes hard on people, even in politics. I don't care what side you are on. Love doesn't talk bad about the other candidate. That's not love. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to tell you that. If you've picked somebody and the other person is doing more talking about the other person than about here's what I'm going to do for our country. 
I'm sorry, it's not love because love would never, ever intentionally hurt somebody. Love has no strategy to, to say negative things about people. Oh, but it's just politics, Brother Ken. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Who, who's, who you gonna serve? Who you gonna serve? My God was loving, he's kind. He shows us mercy every day. Every day we wake up, he says, all right. You get another chance. And then the next day, you get another chance. No hard feelings, no harsh words, no unkindness. Priscilla said, can y'all pray for me? Healing for my entire body. May our bodies work in optimum function. I come in agreement with that prayer. The Bible says where two or three people agree and believe and follow his commands and have no unforgiveness in their heart, that we can ask him anything. Lord, I ask right now for everybody in this room whose hearts are right, that you heal their bodies. Everybody in this room, Lord, who, who doesn't have any alts or grievances towards people, that you'd heal their bodies because they're following your command. You see what I'm doing here? I'm getting us closer and closer to the word of God, closer and closer to the, to the Lord. Well, I pray for Priscilla this morning, Lord, that you look at her heart, make her, make her whole, help her to love people, and then heal her body. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Stephanie said, Lord, forgive me. Stephanie, that's a great prayer. Rebecca said, Lord, forgive me. I'm hurt. Triggered by multiple family members. Thank you for your honesty. God is sitting there saying, now I can work. Now I can work with these people because they're being real with me. Charlotte said, I've been having anxiety over the world and needed this. Thank you. God, speak to me through you all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. He gets all the credit. I'll make sure he gets, I don't want any of it. This is all him. Jamie, good morning to you. I didn't see you out there. I started back at the top working my way down so I don't miss any of the prayers. Prayer team, we love you. Personally, appreciate all that you've done by being a part of our family. Like, thank you. Sheila says she needs the words to say. Lord, give Sheila the words to say. Holy Spirit, speak through us. My wife says it often and, and, and it... it if the Holy Spirit could j just generate this with even more power, it would help you de-escalate so many situations in your life. Ask yourself, does this need to be said? Does this need to be said by me? Does this need to be said by me right now? Holy Spirit, do I need to say something? Holy Spirit, do, do, do I need to say something right now? Talk to me. Holy Spirit, am I the one that needs to speak up or do I need to let this one go? That's my prayer. That we become more and more like him. He was gentle. He was a gentle lamb. Are you a gentle lamb? Or are you a raging bull? Something happens. The audacity. Brother Perry said, please pray for my family, for faith, peace, love, restoration, and protection. I lift up Perry. I lift up Sister L. She goes by Braids by L. He goes by PZ Productions. I lift up your family. I lift God. I lift you up to the Lord. And I'm asking Father, how do I say this? They don't know y'all's situation. But if it's like any marriage in the world, we just need some peace. We, we just want to be able to figure out how to get along and like each other again. I pray for every marriage, every marriage in this room. Probably gonna pray for marriages eight or nine times every morning. And it's the same prayer. Lord, help them to hit the reset button. Lord, help people to, to humble themselves. Just, just, just humble yourself. I pray for husbands that they would just die. Get on the cross and die daily. 
die. Just you don't you don't get to have the final say sometimes. Die. Yeah, I'm the head of the home, but die. Yeah, you you the one God put in charge, but you are there for your family and let the Lord deal with them. You don't get to be somebody's Holy Spirit. Lead your family by an example. I pray for husbands right now that they would lead by example, not just words. Sometimes it's too much talking from both sides. And sometimes we just need to live it out. I pray right now, Lord, that we be living examples, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. It's our reasonable service. I lift up wives this morning, Lord, that they would respect their husbands as they would respect God. I pray that they get to a place where they say, this is the man God has placed as the head of the home and I respect it. I respect the head and this is where the head wants to go in accordance to the Lord. Trying to protect the family, trying to keep the family within the right guardrails. Then now listen, I won't push back. And then I pray that the two of you are constantly praying, constantly communicating, constantly talking to the Lord on behalf of. I'm asking and praying, asking Father right now for husbands and wives to get to a place. Mm. Get to a place where the two of you really don't care. And it's, it's whatever, it's whatever you want. I don't care no more. No, 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 no. Like, uh, I mean, such a humble position, so lowly, so meek and mild. That the relationship thrives on compassion. It, it thrives on respect. It's the engine. It's the, it's the fuel in the engine. Just, I don't care. It's just whatever you want. I pray that everybody in this room, Lord, who's dealing with a challenge, they get the reset button. And I can't go without praying for the singles and the widows. Those dating, those that are looking for somebody, those that haven't even started dating yet. We ask a blessing upon their future spouses, their future marriages for those who say, I'll never be married again. I don't want to get married again. Lord, a blessing is needed there also. But will you give everybody in this room the ability to love people, to be available, to have a heart of compassion? Because if you're going to get married one day, oh, you got to be compassionate. You got to be patient. You got to be kind. You got to be faithful. Everything that's the fruit of the spirit, you got to have self-control. God is working in you right now. All you singles, all you singles, he's working in you right now, the fruit of the spirit. So we don't have to say these prayers for you in five years and 10 years from now when you all get married and you're coming down saying, oh, pray for me. Me and my spouse, we, we're having problems. I can tell you right now how to get rid of those problems before you even get married. Just humble yourself. It's not about, it's not about you. And if both spouses, oh my gosh, if both spouses finally get to a place cognitively with the spirit of God where they realize this is not about me. It's not about everything I want. Your marriage would be amazing. Both people would be happy. Not just one. Both people. Because both people are constantly saying, it. let me ask, let me ask first. Not trying to get permission, but be mindful that the other person is way more important than they, than they are. How did I get back to marriages? I'm supposed to be praying for the singles. I am praying for the singles. I pray that you get to a place in your singleness that God helps you understand that this is not about you. And when you get to that place, I do believe the Holy Spirit, Father God will allow your eyes to open for whoever it is. Some of you singles are in a season that might be one year, two years, three years, five years. Learn what you need to learn in this season, this preseason, because the real game is going to start one day. Learn everything you need to learn. Get all the things out that you need to get out. Get the dust off. Prepare your hearts. Start dying now. It's not about you. Listen, all you singles, I'm praying for you right now that you receive this prayer. Whenever you get to that place where it's not about me, but this is what I'd like and this is what I really wanted. This would be lovely in that when you get to a place where you really genuinely 
Say, I don't care. I just want to be around you. I don't care. I just want to be with you. I don't care what the colors are, what it looks like. Where I just want I don't really care about any of that. It means nothing to me. I just want to love you. That's that's marriage in a nutshell. That's the great mystery that Paul talks about. The great mystery between a husband and wife is the relationship between father and us. Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do or wherever you want me to go. I don't really care. This is not my Christian life. This is your Christian life. And I humble myself before your throne, oh great master, savior, I'm just happy to be with you. I'm just happy to, to be wedded to you. I'm happy to, for the opportunity to be restored. And Thank you. What do you need me to do? I'm, I'm available to you, Lord. What do you need me to do? What a great mystery between a husband and a wife. Lord, what do you, what, what do you, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do? I don't know. I thought we'd go to the park. Whatever you want to do. This is your day. Have you ever said that to somebody you love? What do you want to do today? It's your day. Not just on their birthday. Not just on a, on a vacation weekend. But just general. Like, what do you want to do today? What's your plans today? Oh, what a great mystery this is between a husband and a wife. Father, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do today, Lord? Let's do it. I'm listening. Samuel, Samuel. Your servant's listening. Samuel, Samuel. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Let's get back to the prayers. I'm about 20 minutes behind on the prayers. I'm going to kind of pick this up. Lisa said prayers for God to open doors for new opportunities, restoration, husband's faith and healing. Lord, I come in agreement with Lisa this morning. I come in full agreement. Lisa, I, I agree with you. You know this. We trust the Lord to continue to open doors for new opportunities and that at the right time, you're going to get what it is the Lord is for you. We pray for a restoration in all relationships that you're dealing with and the Lord would give you a heart posture to love people. We love the, the Lord so much that we love his people even more. We pray for your husband. Lord, bring him in. Send laborers. Talk to him through your Holy Spirit. We rebuke all the enemy's tactics in this life. And we pray for healing, emotionally, mentally, and physically. Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing Priscilla. She said, praise God. Today I get to go to a health summit for doctors as part of my pre-health program. I'm pre-med. Lord, may she find the right people to be in contact with, the right people to network with, and the right resources. Lord, thank you for blessing her and giving her favor. May she learn what she needs to learn. Shantrisha's here with us. She said, hello, yes, that's me. I say it all the time, but I think it's just their behavior. Yeah, yeah, we, we think we don't like people, but I don't like their behavior. I don't like what they do, but I still love the person. That's the prayer, Miss Shantresha. We lift you up. Thank you for joining us today. I ask Holy Spirit to continue to help you grow. Help all of us. May the, may the spirit of the living God go before Sherbrene. I think that's your other name here. Bless you. Priscilla said, continue to pray for her. She gets ready for this M MCAT on January 24. Listen, I trust the Lord for his timing. If he's called you to do this, then you're going to do well. Hallelujah. Grant Fussy said, I'm so, I was so angry with God for so long for my dad dying. Thinking about Christian again, but scared. Grant Fussy, I'm going to send you a private message. But we were all there. At least, I don't, okay, I won't say all. I was there. I was in the same situation he was in, Garfussy. I don't even know if Garfussy is still on here. What a unique name. 
Garfusa, are you still in this in this room? Lord, send them back here. Lord, wherever this individual went to, I'm asking that you would give them peace. Their heart is in the right direction. Their heart wants to come back to you. Their heart is making a decision to, to think about surrendering all. I pray that you take away the fear, the anxiety of, of surrendering. I, I pray, Lord, that this individual would even right now feel the spirit of the living God minister to their hearts. Have your way in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Casey said, pray for me to love and show the love to all that I come in contact with. Beautiful prayer. He said, you can ask me anything, but you got to obey my commands first. Love people. Lord, help Casey to love everybody. To just genuinely have her, her arms out. Oh, what a great illustration that was last night. I thank Holy Spirit for revelation knowledge. That wasn't even in my notes. He gave me that right there on that spot. That we have to love people like a mom and dad or auntie or uncle, grandma, grandpa sitting there waiting for the little baby to gesture back. I, I know you fussy, but come on. Come on. I love you. But do that for Casey. Give her peace in her heart. Sammy said, pray for my anxiety with my upcoming trip. It's filling my mind, and I know that's the enemy. I, re I rebuke a spirit of worry and fear. I rebuke fear. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, pray and thanks the, thank the Lord in advance. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind. And then think on these things. Think on things that are true, things that are wonderful, things that are lovely, things that are kind, things that are pleasant, things that are of excellent report. Well, you know some excellent reports. I mean, y'all going to have an amazing time on your trip. God's going to be with you. Thanksgiving is around the corner. Christmas is around the corner. Like, start thinking on things that are positive. For those of you who got birthdays coming up, vacations coming up, your kids are doing really good in school. You got, you're looking forward to some things. That's all. That's how you replace anxiety and depression. You follow the scripture. What's the scripture say? Give it to him and then start thinking on things that are good. Let Leave it there. We had, the Lord gave us the analogy last week of the parable of dropping it off at the mechanic shop. Trust the, the master mechanic. Lord, I dropped this anxiety off. What bay do you want us to put it in? We're going to put it in bay number one. And Lord, give her peace about this trip. Lord, take away all worry, strife. All kind of anxiety built up. Lord, I rebuke that stress hormone trying to release and cause pain, cause a, a spike in, in awareness. It's, all good. it's okay to have a, an initial awareness, but after that, I need that to go back because it can't stay. I cannot be overstimulated with a stress hormone cortisol. So, Lord, reset Sister Sammy's anxiety. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Barbara, for the prayer of protection. Sister Ebony, 1989, please pray for me as I pray for you. Lord, we need you. Thank you in advance. I love you, Lord. Lord, you know what Ebony needs. You know exactly what she needs. She needs a car. She needs a job. She needs food for her, her for family. She needs peace of mind. She needs this divorce to go the right way. Lord, she needs you in every area of her life, Lord. She needs the strength she needs to raise those four babies. Maybe it's five. Forgive me if I got the number off. Lord, bless her today. Bless her this week. Go before her. Give her strength. Help her to be the mob you called her to be with all of this other stuff going on. She, Lord, if you didn't hear us, she needs a job. She needs a car. She needs literal food on her table for her kids. She don't beg for nothing. She don't ask people for anything. Lord, she's trusting you. She's trusting you Lord, that it'll be more than enough. Some nights she might even have to go hungry herself so the babies will eat. Bless her for her sacrifice. At the right timing, God, we're trusting you. 
I'm standing with her, Lord. I'm here with her. I come with the rank you gave me on behalf of my sister Ebony. And we're waiting on you to bless her, to get her through this rough season. You said you'd never leave her. You wouldn't forsake her. You said she can ask you for anything. You know, all she had to do is obey your commands, follow your commands to love people. God, her heart is right. She's trying. Help her. Lord, bless her kids. Lord, don't allow them to have core memories of this season in their life. Lord, don't let them ever remember some of the tough times that mama's going through. Just like you did us. I don't know about you all, but the Lord protected my core memories because I didn't even know we were poor growing up. I, I never, the Lord even didn't allow me to realize that mom and daddy was struggling. I always thought it was good. I didn't know until I got older that we was poor for a season. Lord, protect their core memories just like you did ours. May they see nothing but goodness and righteousness so they're not depressed later in life. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Sister Liz said, continue to pray for her son, his family, her daughter, her family for health, and then for finances, and then me a new career. And then also those who are lonely, those who are still grieving, pray for those who are having a, a tough time healing from the death of a loved one, that they would have peace and comfort. I lift up a real good friend of mine also right now, Liz, who lost her father over the last week or so. Her name is Alicia. And we ask that the Lord would just bless that family and keep them at peace. Lord, I go back to Sister Liz and I'm asking you, you know what her son and daughter need. Continue to grant them grace and mercy. Her daughter's family just needs a, a touch of your, your anointing for their health physical health, mental, emotional health. Continue to keep Sister Liz's finances in alignment. Lord, allow her to pay all her bills. A little extra, a little extra left over. And Lord, her new career, we trust you with it. We know this is a timing issue. Well, we, we pray every day for her new career. We trust you that we know you've heard this prayer and that it's going to come through when you say it's going to come through. Continue to heal her, Lord, as she grows. She grows from the loss of her husband. We trust you with her tears. We trust you, Lord, her, her sorrow and her sadness. For you are a man of many sorrows. You're acquainted with grief. So I know you go see about her grief. I thank you in advance for your continued healing in her body, her mind, her soul. Hallelujah. Next prayer request. Thank you, Lord. Ruth said, Lord, please protect my daughter and my grandchildren from their abusive father. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, please get them out. Help them, heal them, deliver them, point them in the right direction. Please. I lift up everybody that's in an abusive situation right now. We pray for your sons, your daughters, your grandkids, neighbors, friends, families that you know. I pray for everybody right now who's having to deal with abuse. You get cussed out often. That's not normal. It's not normal. Some of you have tolerated it, accepted it. I pray that your love, your love for that individual that abused you or is abusing you continues, that you don't retaliate, but I also pray that you are safe. Many of you do love the people who are abusing you, but you need to be safe. Many of you have a heart towards people who have hurt you, but you, you still need to be safe. So we're asking God also for wisdom in this love. We ask the Holy Spirit to give you uh, revelation, knowledge, and understanding that it's okay to get some help, to find some relief, to not sit there and take the abuse in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I lift up everyone who gets cussed out constantly every day. That's not normal. You get yelled at daily. That's not normal. Being pushed physically 
It's not normal. Being threatened with your life. I, you know what I would do to you? I rebuke a devil that allows us to sit here and think that this is normal. There's freedom. There's peace. There's shelters. There's people in your community. There's churches. I pray. Oh, God, we pray that they would wake up, that you would give them revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, an aha moment right now. Oh, Father, be near the brokenhearted. Be, be a shelter in the time of a storm. Please, please, please. Heal their hearts. They need healing. They need healing from the abuse. They need healing from all the pain that has come from all the words that have been said to them, all the accusations, all the finger pointing, all the criticism, God, give them peace. Heal their hearts, deliver them, God, but also keep them safe. Listen, if you know somebody, you might, you know them. Um, may the Holy Spirit use you to minister a kind word, to minister a compelling word made that you ask Holy Spirit, Lord, what do you want me to say to them that will help them? And if you can, if you have the ability to take them in, provide a way of escape for them. May the Lord allow you with that extra room you have back there to bring them in for, for, for a season. But this is what we're down here for. This, this is not a dress rehearsal. We don't get another chance at, at doing life. And if you have the opportunity that God is giving you to bless somebody, help somebody, give somebody a season of relief. May this be that opportunity. Ren said, please pray for my healing. I've been bedridden for weeks with chronic back issues. Ren, here's my prayer over your back right now. First, that you love people that you love everyone who's ever hurt you and was mean to you, that your hands are out waiting for them to call you, your arms are out like in anticipation of them knocking on the door, whether they do it or not, whether they do it or not, that's my prayer for you, that there's nothing in your heart against people. He said, then you can ask me anything you wish. You can ask me, I'll do it. But will you heal her back? As she loves people, Lord, will you continue to take the, the pain out of the nerves, Lord, all the way down her spine, her L4, L5, Lord, all the way down uh, up to her neck and back, Lord, will you allow inflammation to leave? Push it out through the lymphatic system, push it out through the nervous system, push it out through her uh, immune system, Lord. Restore her back according to her restoration of love towards people. Crystal said, pray for my marriage, communication, hearts and minds, finances and health. Lord, I lift Jerry up. We lift him up. We pray, Lord, and believe by faith. He's coming around. We believe by faith, Lord, you're restoring the marriage. We believe by faith. This is not over yet until you say it's over, Lord. She is fighting for her marriage. Oh, if we had to fight that Crystal had, Lord. She is fighting, God. She's not giving up on this marriage. Lord, will you please continue to give her a heart of compassion? Lord, will you continue to give her a heart of, of patience in this situation? Lord, will you show her the direction she needs to go? Save this marriage. Heal his heart. Make them whole. Hit, help them to hit the reset button. She's waiting. She's trusting you. She's just going to wait on you to do it. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, continue to bless her health her lungs, restore them completely, her finances. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, hallelujah. My sister Shonda said, good morning. Please pray for Ray. His arthritis is really affecting him for the past couple of weeks. I don't know where Ray's heart is. This is, this is really, uh, how do I say it, God? This is us really evolving in our faith. I ask that Holy Spirit would help Ray to reconcile in his heart anybody that he doesn't love, anybody that's hard to love, anybody that's challenged to love. 
and then Ray get his heart completely straight with the Lord that the Holy Spirit would minister to Ray and then as the Holy Spirit ministers to Ray the Lord will heal him of the arthritis that the Holy Spirit will answer his prayer we, we pray for his healing holistically mind, body, soul we, we pray that the Holy Spirit goes and helps Brother Ray in those dark places, those lonely places, that the Holy Spirit will help him reconcile things that need to be reconciled in the name of Yeshua. Help Sister Sean to be the wife you called her to be. Help Brother Ray to be the husband you called him to be. Continue to bless their marriage and their union. Heal them and make them whole in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Jamie said, please pray for me and my daughter. We've lost three family members, my husband mother-in-law and my dad her grandfather our condolences like we're really like when we hear in this prayer room that someone's lost somebody we can relate we we are family at this point we get it there are multiple people in this room who have lost husbands grandmas grandpas sons daughters Our hearts are for you. Jamie, I don't know if you're still here. And she says she's having neck surgery on the 24th on top of all of this. Nothing's too hard for God. He's not surprised of our circumstance. He allows what he allows. And if he allowed it, that means there's some good in there somewhere. We just got to be patient and wait. Wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. You'll mount up. You'll mount up on wings of eagles like an eagle. Our prayer is that you would run and not get weary when everything has happened to you, that you're able to walk this walk and not faint. Lord, don't let her faint from all of this. Lord, help her to reconcile in her heart the love that you have for mankind. We ask you in advance to heal her completely. Be with the doctors and the surgeons, the nurses, the anesthesiologists. Do whatever they need to do to her neck. Hallelujah. Latricia said, please pray for me to have peace of mind, to have favor in my court situation. Lord, you know what, what, how this is already going to turn out? Well, you already know the outcome of all court cases. Dre's case, Latricia's case, Perry's case, Elle's case. You already know the outcome, Lord, of Angela's case. You already know. May we put all of our trust in you. May we get closer to you, Lord, as we get closer to these court dates. For everyone getting ready to go through divorce court, Lord, have mercy. You already know the, the turnout. You know how, how this is going to work out. Lord, no anxiety, no fears, no worries. Trina said, I'm standing in faith for my co-worker, Deontay. He's homeless. He's living in a friend's car. Lord, you know about Deontay's situation? Can you find him a place to stay? Can you work out his situation, his finances? This is, it's about to get cold. We pray for all the homeless. If you know a homeless person right now, you remember seeing a homeless person, you drove by a homeless person, at least they appeared to be homeless, our prayer for everybody that you can think of that was holding that sign up or someone that you know that doesn't have a place. His Holy Spirit... Give them peace of mind. Give them structure. Lord, give them a humble heart to go stay with somebody, go to a shelter. Lord, help them with their anxieties, their stresses, their fears. Lord, help them with any kind of mental concerns that they might have. Lord, send somebody by, a family member, a wellness check of some sort. Please, save their souls. Heal their mind. In the name of Yeshua. We lift up all the homeless in the homeless shelters. I know it's a big prayer, but you're a big God. And nothing's too hard for you. So I lift up everybody in all the homeless shelters around the United States, all the ones in Canada, the ones in Europe, the ones in Africa, the ones in uh, the Middle East, all the homeless, Lord, that are roaming. And uh, I want to get it right. In South America, our Hispanic communities, our Latin communities. Lord, everybody who doesn't have a home, all the refugees, may they get to know you 
and may you find them shelter in, the, in their storm. Hallelujah. Angie's creation said, please pray that God removes my stress, my anxiety over work. Sister Angie, we trust the Lord that he give you peace that passes all understanding and that you love people the way that he wants you to love them. He said, you can ask me for anything, but make sure you love my people and then you can get your prayers answered or take away her stress and anxiety. Zoe said, please pray for me that my finances. Um, let me let me start over. Please pray for me that my fiance can spend Christmas with us. Raising kids alone is not easy. Zoe, we lift you up and ask the Lord to have his way. If that's your prayer, we stand with you. We agree, Lord. You already know how this is going to work. You know the Lord already sees Christmas, right? It's not a surprise for him. It's not like something he's putting together. He does look at our faith. He already sees our prayers next week, our prayers next week. He sees our heart. He already knows people's heart. This is a heart issue. He sees how much we love people, how much we care for people, how much we don't care for people. I don't want really to care for them that much. I pray the Holy Spirit looks down on every last one of us, Zoe. And continues to help us love his people. And then he says, you can ask me anything. So Lord, she's asking that her fiance spends Christmas with them. I'm asking that Zoe continues to love everybody that you put into her life. And then Amy is sure. Y'all see what I'm doing this morning? Last night's sermon this morning's devotional. Jen said, what do you do when you forgive your mom and she still rejects you? And don't want you to visit her. What do you do when your mama is still being ugly and mean? What do you do if you tried everything you can in your power and they still reject you? What do you do when your mom act like didn't nothing happen a long time ago and she just want to move on? What if your mama is just a mean mama? You stick your arms out. Come on. Come on. Come on. You be patient the way the Lord was patient with you. Put your feelings in your pocket. Don't get overly emotional. And love them the way that love, the way that God loves them. What is she doing now? What, 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 what's going on? What's the problem? Why is mama treating me this way? That's the cry of many of you. I, I don't have to be a prophet. I'm not sitting here telling one person's business. There's enough people in this room that can testify like Sister Jen. If you got a mama that loves you, a mama who's patient and kind with you, count it a blessing. Count it a blessing because there's many people in this room right now. Jen, I'm not going to start naming other names. Y'all can name yourself. We're a community here. We're family. You would love for your mom just be normal to answer your question sis 70 times 7 a heart of compassion arms out ready to take her in whenever she's ready and you ask Holy Spirit to continue to work on their heart ask Holy Spirit to send a labor ask Holy Spirit to just fill her with love ask Holy Spirit to give her a prodigal son aha moment our prayer, I do believe this. I do believe this in my heart. The Lord hears every prayer. And he's working on people's heart. People have to make a decision. People still have free choice, free will. Our prayer is that the Holy Spirit gets in there to that free will, that free choice. And it humbles them. Holy Spirit comes in and says, no, you shouldn't treat your daughter that way. You shouldn't treat your kids that way. Shouldn't treat your husband that way. I pray, Holy Spirit, speaking to husbands, they don't treat your wife that way. Talking to parents, don't talk to your kids like that. Micheline, she's probably already at work. Pray for Michael that he listens to the Lord and fidelity in our marriage is drinking. 
Bella's decisions and then anger. But my sister needs you. She needs peace in her heart about everything. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard knowing that there's a problem right here in my face and nothing's changing. It's hard to know that things have happened in a marriage that you had no control of and pretty much almost ruined is ruining the marriage. I lift up Micheline this morning to you, Lord. I lift up Michael to you. I lift up Bella to you. I lift up their son to you and ask that you heal this family completely. Continue the healing process, the healing journey. Lord, get them to a place where they truly forgive. They truly have a heart of compassion, Lord. That some of that hurt, all of the hurt is relieved that the reset button can be hit one day. That honesty can prevail. That integrity would prevail. Lord, that you touch Michael, Lord, to just truly be humbled before you. Michael, I don't know if you're listening this morning. I'm believing and trusting the Lord for the restoration of your marriage. I'm believing and trusting the Lord that you're going to be the person that Micheline needs you to be in this marriage. That your son needs you to be and that Bella needs you to be. I'm asking Holy Spirit to continue to work your heart, Michael, to a place that's completely focused on him. 100%. Like nothing but God. That's all I want. I ask Holy Spirit to reduce your need to drink. That the Lord will heal you of the pain without the drinking. I pray that the Holy Spirit provide you some comfort, some relief as you get closer to him, Michael. I pray you can hear this in the spirit. As you get closer to the Lord, the Lord will continue to start healing other areas of your life. He's already touched your finances with a blessing. Now he's going to touch your body and your soul. But you got to continue to give up some things, give up some things, give in. Start being honest. Be open. Lord Bella and their son, Lord, have compassion on them. Have compassion on them, Lord. Be with them in their decision making. I pray for all young people. That, that age of 12 to 22, they're, they're learning who they are. They're becoming young adults. Lord, help them to make the right decisions. Lord, help our young people, Lord, to hear your voice. Help, Lord, we're asking. We're asking on behalf of all children. Yeah, I know 22 doesn't seem to be a child, but if you got a 21 or 22-year-old, you know that they still sometimes depend on you like, like a child in a good way. Help their decision-making. Help them to, to have the right influences in their life. Lord, help them to be able to filter out the things that aren't you and, and be able to, to discern the things that are you. Lord, keep their eyes pure from the things they see on TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat. Lord, keep their spirits and their hearts pure, their souls clean from all the things and the distractions of this world. Devil, you are a liar. Did you hear me? You're a liar. You don't get to touch our children. You don't get to touch our grandchildren. Hands off, pencils down, walk away, leave them alone. Hallelujah. Standing on faith for the salvation and healing of my children. Great timing there, Trina. All of them. I'm going to stay, say their name and leave somebody out. Carlito, Ezra, Uriah, Ur, 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 uh, and the other two. <laughs> The young man that just got released from, from, from incarceration, Lord, bless him. Give him stability, Lord. Give him some guardrails. Put the right people in his life. Put the right influences in his life, Lord. Help him to maintain a really good job. Lord, keep his mind in perfect peace. Deliver them from all the things the enemy wants to throw at, at her children. Hallelujah. Micheline said, help me, Lord, that I learn how to forgive people who have hurt me really bad. Yes, yes, that's an awesome, honest prayer. Please, please help all of us to love people, the ones that hurt us really bad. It's easy to love the person who gives you gifts and is kind to you. That's not love. I'm sorry to tell you, that's not love. 
Love is loving people who persecute persecute you. It's blessing people who have intentionally tried to to, to discount you. I want to know if you're that kind of Christian. I know all the Christians who love people back. I want to I want to find the Christians who who love people who hate them, like love them. America says praise report. Her co-worker's husband, cancer, completely disappeared. Doctor said it was a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Miracles still happen. And I don't, I, I mean, I don't know this young man personally. I don't know the wife. I bet their hearts are right. I bet they gave up any issues or challenges that they had. I bet they didn't even care. I bet they got to a place where they said, Lord, we love everybody. He said, you can ask me for anything. John chapter 15, I need you to go read all of that today. America, thank you for your testimony. Y'all go check America's page out, her TikToks. Very encouraging. Very encouraging TikToks. So bless miracle, bless our family. I said miracle. Bless America. Bless America, her daughter, her family, her sisters, her mom, her dad. Keep them in perfect peace. Continue to grow her up in you. Hallelujah. Odessa said, I hear my heart's prayer on the live without even writing a word. Hallelujah. God bless you, Odessa. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Sister Blue. I'm scrolling slow, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Odessa said, gentle parenting love. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Jamie says she's getting nervous for her neck. Fusion on 1122. No fear. I trust right now that the Holy Spirit will give you peace about this. I pray the Holy Spirit just relaxes you in the name of Yeshua. Everything's going to turn out all right. Rhonda B. said, heal this hurt and this pain. God, you know my heart. When I stand with Rhonda, Rhonda, is always great to have you. Asking the Holy Spirit to give you everything you need today. Give you everything that you need to overcome the pain. Emotionally, physically. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to guard you. Like protect you. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help you love people. He said, I'll answer your prayers. Or two or three people come together and ask, I'll answer. But follow my commands. New commandment I give you. Love people. Gracie, good morning to you. Hallelujah. Vet for Life said today has an important test today for my teacher certification. Please pray that I pass it. Listen, here's the prayer. The Lord calls you to be a teacher. You're going to be a teacher. The Lord put an ambition in your heart to follow through and help children and help students. Then that's what's going to happen. No, no teacher certification is going to stop you from doing that. I pray right now that Lord, you help him pass this certification. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, have your way. Kim, good morning to you. This is awesome. Liz said, Lord, please forgive me for who I feel about my boss and how he treated me when my husband passed. Wow, that's good. That's good, Liz. Thank you for your honesty and your openness in this room. Beth said, please forgive me for my unfaithfulness. I choose to sin more often than I should. Forgive me. The Lord heard your forgiveness. He looks at your heart and he's telling everybody in this room who's sinned. Try again. You get 490 times today. You can sin 490 times against the Lord. At some point we do get better. We should be ascending. But he's not mad at anybody. We thank the Lord for Sister Pittman. Sister Shauna put some prayers in here. We're going to go ahead and honor her 
request. I know she's making her rounds. Shout out to all of our nurses. Prayers for all of our nurses, caregivers, providers, RNs, our LRNs, supervisors, uh, those taking care of people in the hospice, those taking care of those home health care, to all the dentists, chiropractors, dentist assistants. If you're doing anything to help somebody else with their physical health, may God's blessing be upon you. Blessings to all of our counselors, to all of our, our therapists, all of our life coaches out there, people who are making it a point to help someone else along in their journey mentally or emotionally. May a blessing be upon you. May the Holy Spirit give you the same strength that he's given those who are taking care of people's physical needs. You can't do it alone. The Lord is going to continue to bless you and keep you. So bless all of our caregivers, mentally, emotionally, physically. Sister Shana said, continue to keep our children in prayer. Lord, we lift up to you, Shana, male senior, male junior, Monet, AJ, Antoine, Najee. Lift up Joshua and Shamari, all the grandchildren. Lord, we ask that you continue to heal Mel Jr.'s knee, his legs, his body. Make him whole, Lord. Get him prepared for the second half of the season. Lord, open up the, the floodgates of heaven for his opportunities for university. Lord, continue to bless Sean and Melvin's marriage. They need full restoration. Lord, help her heart. Help his heart. Help him to be the husband you called him to be. Lord, help him to humble himself. Help him, Lord, to go before you and just get closer to you. Help him to get focused, God. Lift up prayer for Shamari and her nephew, Austin. They got court case. That God would give them favor. Lord, you know already the outcome of this case. It's in your hands. We trust you. We lift up male seniors eyesight, his diagnosis of diabetes and high blood pressure, Lord, that you would give him the wisdom to reverse it. Lord, give him the wisdom on what foods to eat, how to take care of his body. And we lift up Mary Young and Henry Young, Lord, that you continue to heal them physically, emotionally, mentally. God, nothing's too hard for you. Every last one of Shauna's prayers and all the ones she hadn't even put in here yet, Lord, we know that you go before this family. We pray for her dad. We pray for her sister, Lord, that you continue to heal them, make them whole. Lord, increase this, this family's financial position. Help them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Odessa, my prayer to continue to be lifted in this place. Hallelujah, Odessa. Blessings to you. Sister Ellen, I'm accepting the, the process. God heal me. Hallelujah. For those that are here that are new, Sister Ellen was diagnosed. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's and we are believing God for her full healing. She's on her way to full recovery. We thank the Lord in advance for his healing power. We thank the Lord for giving her a miracle. God is touching so many people in this place. And this is what faith looks like. It's believing something that hasn't happened yet. Thank you, Lord, for healing, Sister Ellen. Lauren Anza, she's at this place right now. Elder said, thank you for prayers for the singles. Hallelujah. Jordy's here. Thank you for praying for and with us. Jordy, I lift you up continually. I know the, the burden that you bear. And I understand by grace, God is upon your life. I pray, Jordy, if you're still listening right now, that he gives you the strength you need for another day, another week, gives you the words and the encouragement for other people, even as you might be dealing with your own stuff. We all deal with our own stuff. Every last person in this room has to go to work and help people, but we got our own stuff. Every last person in this room have children that they need to raise and, and, and spouses they have to deal with children and loved ones that you're just always calling you but you got your own stuff who's the preacher's preacher who's the therapist therapist who's the counselor's counselor holy spirit holy spirit move in jordy's life continue to grow him in the areas where you need to grow him continue to free him in the areas that he needs to be free i trust you that you're not done with jordy this is just a this is just a start 
Lord, Philippians chapter one, verse six, Lord, complete that work that you started in him. Complete that work that you started in him. Sister Kelly, it's good to have you. She said prayers for her son. Holy Spirit would guide. Bless finances, parenting, guidance. He's stubborn. Lord, bless her son. Lord, touch his heart. Open up his eyes. Heal him, Lord. Send laborers. Send laborers, Lord. Be patient with him. Help mom to continue to love and be patient. Heal this family. Make them whole. Hit the reset button. Holy Spirit, have your way. Don said, Don Marie said, I need a miracle. I got nerve damage in my left arm. Everybody with nerve damage. Left arm, neck, knee, pinky toe, elbow, nerve damage in your shoulder, your wrist. Think about Michael right now, Micheline. Anybody with nerve damage, I trust the Lord. I trust him this much. This is how much I trust him. That he can heal nerve damage just like he did that man on that, on that cot in the Bible whose body couldn't move. He was paralyzed. That the man who was sitting by the, the pool waiting on somebody to touch the pool. The, the man whose four friends came and brought him to Yeshua. The man whose arm was withered with nerve damage and possible some other damage and the Lord made his arm whole. That, that Savior, that Lord, that healing power. I trust the healing power of the Lord to reverse nerve damage, to tell the nerves to come into an alignment with the word of the Lord, that by the stripes of Christ we're healed. No weapon formed against us will prosper. By faith, I trust the Lord to heal Don Marie. I'm also asking this morning, Don, I'm also putting this in, in, our, in our prayer card. Like about the little card on Amazon and it says you got one item, two items, you got three items in your prayer card. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revelation knowledge. I'm adding a, a, another, another one up to y'all's cart this morning that you love people. I pray that the Holy Spirit allows you to purchase that item first. Before you purchase anything else, before you get any other prayer request answered this morning, that anybody you don't like, anybody that's hurt you, anybody that you don't care for, that you start loving those people, start liking those people again, start opening your arms up like a parent to a little baby. And once you do that, all your other prayers will be answered. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Gam said, please pray for safe delivery of my grandbaby. We are still in wait for her. Grand interest. Congratulations. Though we already know you know the date and the time. Not a surprise for you. Do that for them. Hallelujah. Jerry said, pray for me and my family, grandchildren. Pray for my sister-in-law, Sharon. She, she has surgery. Lord, lift up Jerry. We trust you with their lives. Lord, bless the Williams. Help them to love one another genuinely and bless this family Lord all the grandchildren and his sister coming through surgery Ali Wan here just praying for guidance while we pray that the Lord gives you the guidance you need to love people to be kind to people to be patient to show you the right way we pray Holy Spirit goes before you and helps you in every area of your life John chapter 15 is our prayer over you Hallelujah. Sister Kelly says she woke up reviewing her notes last night from last night's message. Listen, I haven't loaded it on YouTube yet, but if you want to go find last night's message, go over to my Facebook page. It should be the very top thing there. Um, I go live on Facebook. We go live on TikTok and then we upload them to YouTube for everybody to see. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Liz, for the blessing. Sister Stephanie is here. Stephanie, blessings on your life. I'm still in awe of what you've gone through, what you shared with this group about a week ago, and how you you wouldn't have even known it because you, you're strong in the Lord. You've overcome so much, and may God's blessings be on you and your family. Y'all go check out Sister Morgan's page too. She's one of those who's also not just a consumer. She's also one who likes to encourage the body of Christ on, on the TikTok. 
Shout out to hey, listen. There's no right or wrong. Some people got to put them in a season where they're just consumers. And I go to your page and it says this person hasn't posted anything yet or it's something from 2023. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's very fine. And then there's the ones that God has put on their heart, like an America, like a Shana, uh, like Sister Morgan. Uh, um, uh, who else is on here that posts regularly that I go see some of their things? And they help, the, they help people in their season. If God has put it on your heart to help somebody in this season, go put it on there. You never know who's hurting. You never know who's in need. Everybody don't listen to Brother Ken. I know that's a shock to some of y'all, but everybody's not attracted to this. Everybody's not into how I speak or uh, follow the way that I, I say things. They may not be into the look. They may not understand my Oklahoma dialect, but they might understand you. And you might be the one person that as they're scrolling, you're, all you got to do is read a scripture, tell a testimony. And next thing you know, 20 people have hit the like button. You encourage them. Hallelujah. All right, next prayer request. Let's move on here. I want to thank everybody for their prayers this morning. I want to thank everybody for starting out the week. Wonderful. This is the day that the Lord made. Nancy Marie is out there today. You and Gustavo all the way in the DR. Asking God's blessings on you. I pray that you have a, a really good week, a better week with less pain and no crying. I'm praying for you, Sister Nancy, that you're able to continue to heal from that surgery you had on your back, your cervical spine. I'm asking Holy Spirit for complete healing. Complete healing. Praying for your immediate family. Praying that you and Gustavo get the paperwork uh, signed and afforded for paid for so you can get him his, his paperwork Danielle God bless you the credit goes to the Lord you learn so much from the Lord Kevin good morning he said I was wondering if you can pray for me I don't know if Kevin is still here because it takes me so long to get down into the each of the comments his name is taken God did I know that some of you have already prayed for him um let me see if he's still on here. Taken, taken. If I don't pray fast enough, they'll scroll on. But I'm glad they dropped their prayer request in here. We pray for him anyway. Lord, I lift up this, this young man, Kevin. You know his heart. You know where he is. You know exactly what he's dealing with in life. We're asking you to go see him where he's at. We're asking you, Lord, to, to lift his heart. Lord, to allow him to love people. That's today's prayer. John chapter 15. But we ask that we would, that he would give everything to you, that he would surrender his heart and his life to you, Lord. If he doesn't know you personally, or if he's just somewhere in the middle, that you would bring him all the way in, Lord. We pray for Kevin this morning, Lord, that you would allow him to see your love manifest your fruit, your spirit. Give him peace. Grant him your joy. That's our prayer. That's everybody's prayer. Peace and joy. I can pray that right now. We can go home. We'll give everybody peace and joy. And the church said, amen. That's the prayer. We all want peace about our situation. We all want joy. All of us want to be able to get along this week without any major problem. We want to be able to get through the week and say nothing, nothing really bad happened to me or my kids. Rebecca said, remove the demons. Well, then let's tell them to go. We know from Luke chapter 10 that he's given us full authority over every demon and devil. We know that no weapon formed against us will ever win, ever. They may try. They may try to take something from me, but they don't get to ruin it. So I rebuke every devil and demon right now in this, this room, this atmosphere. They can't be here because this is holy ground. They're on the outside. Let me describe this for you in the spirit. When we pray, we get to the holies of holies. We are inside of a barrier, so to speak. We are in front of the throne of God. And in the presence of God, there can be no demons, devils, no sin. None of that can be in his presence. Just us, our hearts. So they have to wait outside. They have to wait outside with these noise-canceling earmuffs on, so to speak. And they can't hear. All they do is they can see you. 
They see that you're in a place on your knees. Your heart is humbled. They, they see you from a distance, like a far distance away. And there's this barrier. There's this, oh, I wish y'all could see this in the spirit. There's this spiritual force that keeps them from even trying to enter in. Imagine this force field in the spirit that when you get on your knees and pray, when you pray without ceasing, when you get that word open, when you worship him, when you play worship music, when you constantly listen to sermons, when your heart is constantly thinking about things that are good, things that are pure, things that are lovely, holy, things that are of good report. When you're constantly going before God and saying, Father, here I am, I need you. Those demons cannot penetrate that force field. They have to stay at a distance. So when we pray and say we rebuke you, they go back even further. I rebuke every demon and devil that's around the force field waiting to come in when we get through praying. You don't get to come in today. Every demonic force, every demon, every devil, every fallen every angel, every principality of darkness in high places, low places, medium places, every demon of distraction, every demon of discouragement, every demon of depression and anxiety, all demons and devils of bad thoughts, negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, every demon waiting on the outside ready to get us today, you're going to back up even more. I'm calling you out right now. This you can hear. I have your attention. Take your earmuffs off for a moment. Go further away leave us alone leave our families alone leave our children alone our grandchildren alone our brothers and our sisters alone i rebuke you in the name of yeshua hamashiach you leave you don't get to interfere with our day you don't get to interfere with our week i'm taking a stand for my family right now as a man of god you're gonna leave us alone we bind you we rebuke you we cancel you we slay you we renounce you who are you you don't get to be in our lives. I come against all disruptions, all misconduct. I come against all matters and issues of, of disorderliness. Stop. Not gonna have, I'm not doing it. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. And I speak God's love, his peace, his patience, his kindness, his faithfulness, his self-control. That's what I need. That's what we need. That's the opposite of every demonic attack. That's the opposite of everything the devil may try to, to attempt and every weapon formed against you. I put on the full armor of God, my helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spear, shield of faith. I got on the, the, the belt of truth of God and I'm walking in peace with everybody. I'm good. So you won't get me. You won't distract me. I know who I am. A child of the most high God. So we rebuke all demons. If you agree with that prayer, just say big old thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right there where you are. Hallelujah. We stand. And after you've done everything to stand, keep on standing. Pamela said, need prayer for my kids, grandkids, deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Pamela, we lift your family up. We ask that love be manifested. Love covers a multitude of sin. We pray that you all be able to get along with each other the way that the Lord gets along with his father. We pray right now that you all would be one just as they're one. We pray that whatever issues, challenges, or circumstances have come your way, that you put it in the hands of the Most High. No weapon formed against you. We plead the blood of the Lamb. We overcome because of the blood and the word of our testimony. I have a testimony for you. The Lord has delivered me and my family. Me and my family get along. We're not the perfect family. But we we definitely tolerate and put up with each other. We've learned to have some self-control. Trust me, I get around certain people in my family. And I feel the spirit of the Lord say, just don't say nothing to her. Talk about extend, extended family. Everybody got somebody in their family that they just want to say something to. Like, oh, I wish they would say something one day. I'm just going to let them have it. I'm going to tell them everything. No, no, we're better than that. We're Christians. We have the spirit of the living God living inside of us. And my prayer for Pamela and everyone in this room is that God continue to deliver us, heal us, help us, grow us up, grow up, grow up, grow up emotionally, grow up as a Christian, love people. JoJo's here. Good to have you. Lord, open up doors of escape. That's beautiful. Gracie said, pray for healing over my grandchildren and daughter. Patience for me as I wait on guidance for answers. Lord, do that for Gracie. You know everything that's going on in their lives. 
Lord, you know everything that they're dealing with, everything that they're going through. Lord, I'm asking you that you bless her daughter. Please give her peace. Heal her body, make her whole. Heal her granddaughter, make her whole. Send healing power to flow. And Lord, make sure they have love in their hearts towards everybody. You said you can ask me anything, but make sure you follow my commandments to love people. Not as you love them, but the way that I love them. And I have mercy on everybody. I give everybody thousands of chances. Lord, may her family continue to give everybody thousands of chances. And Lord, you already know what's going to happen in this situation that Grace is waiting on. You already know the outcome. Lord, help her to see that you already know the outcome and that she would have put her, her faith, her, her trust in that answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christine is here. Good to have you. Please pray for me. I'm overwhelmed with bills. Don't know what to do. Pray for my family. We need to catch up, sis. We need to catch up. I'm praying that you make the right decision for your, your lifestyle, your life, and that you trust the Lord. I'm praying for Marcus uh, uh, Jr., Marcus Sr., and Cameron, if I remember correctly. I'm asking Holy Spirit to help all of you as you walk this walk. I'm asking that the Lord give you a way of escape. I don't know what that way of escape is. But if you need to pay your bills, that the Lord give you the right finances. If you need to make some decisions, that he gives you confirmation to make the decision you need to make. So you're not overwhelmed. I pray that he give you peace with the decision you have to make about not being overwhelmed. I pray that you just love people. Even when they treat you wrong, not being abused. But that God give you the patience, the guidance for this road ahead. Well, you know, you already know how this is going to turn out with Christine. Are you surprised about her situation? He said, no. I already see Christine in January 2025. I see her in March of 2025. I already know how it's going to turn out. She just needs to put her trust in me. Stay in me. Trust me. I'll take care of you. Angela said, I'm trusting you, Lord. Shauna says she had a nephew that was homeless. So that's where I'm at. I'm about, what, 15 minutes behind the comments? Lord bless Shauna's nephew that's homeless. She go by Birdie Red here. She has some good content. This is what I was talking about also. Go visit her page. Lord bless Birdie Red. We, we call her Shauna. Shauna Hope. Bless her. Keep her. Watch that grandbaby of hers and her nephew that's homeless. Strengthen them, keep them, watch over them. God called me, said, I need a place to stay and a car and a job. Lord, you already know. I pray that your heart is right, God called me. I pray that you continue to trust the Lord, follow him in everything that you do and don't give up. I pray that you put all your trust in him and lean not into your own understanding. I pray that you love people. Chan, good morning to you. Alejandra, good morning. She said, prayers for my family to love each other. Be able to put everything on YHWH. I love that. I love that prayer. Lord bless Alejandra. Go before Alejandra. Give Alejandra and her family peace, love, and joy. Bless her brothers. Lord, give them peace. Her mom, Lord, give them peace. Manifest your hope and your love and your joy. Hallelujah. Lord, may they become the center of everything. The elder said, ask God, give you compassion for your mother. That's good. Maggie said, pray for Gabriella. God is working. She responded to my text and scripture I sent after two years. So Gabriella is her daughter. We've been praying and believing. Uh, we've been, forgive me, I feel like I got an itch in my nose. <laughs> Gabriella is her daughter. Gabriella has somewhat cut mom off. Maggie hasn't given up. Maggie has trusted the Lord that in God's timing, laborers would labor. Holy Spirit would continue to move on her heart. And this is a testimony. We overcome because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. 
And she's testifying this morning that her daughter Gabriella responded to a text. For some of you moms out there, Maggie, thank you for ministering this morning. There's some mom and dads out there right now that just got some hope because they hadn't heard from their sons and daughters, their sisters or their brothers. And you just encouraged them. After two years, two years, two years of waiting, two years of trusting God, two years of tears, two years of I don't know what's going on, two years of I wish she would just call me, two years of God, I just want to see my grandbabies, two years of God, I don't know how this is going to work out, two years of God, what, what are we doing here? I'm telling each and every last one of you, keep praying. Keep praying. Pray without ceasing. Trust the Lord. Continue to put your, your family before the Lord. Love people. Love people. You can ask me for anything. John chapter 15, verse 7, verse 10. But you have to obey my commands. What's your commands? Love people. Genuinely. Your prayers aren't answered because you don't love people. But if you choose to love them, if you ever get to a place where you say, you know what? I know they hurt me. I really do wish the best for them. I love them. Some people are saying, pray for me, Brother Ken. I am. I am. That's what I'm literally doing. I'm asking God to put you in a place where you love his people the way that he loves them. And then your prayers will be answered. Quit complaining about things aren't the way they need to be. And you wish you had this. And why isn't this worked out? And God, why haven't you come through? What if? 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 What if the answer to your prayer was your compassion toward the person that hurt you? What if the answers to your prayers were sitting on railway, waiting to be released? The moment you said in your heart, I don't care no more. I'm going to be kind to them. I'm going to wave at them. I'm going to smile at them. I'm going to go over there. What if the Lord is sitting there waiting to, to rain down a blessing on you? The moment you decide in your heart, it's all good. I don't even care anymore. I'm, co I'm cool with everybody. Do y'all know the story of Job? I told y'all the story of Job. The story of Job was not just about losing all his kids, all his finances, losing his, his property, his wife being ugly toward him. That was not the story of Job. The entire story of Job can be found in over 40 chapters of people hating on him. His closest friends accused him over and over again. The story of Job was not about I lost my loved ones and I'm grieving. The story of Job was about people who accused him of doing something wrong, accused him that his heart wasn't right. People who hated on him, people who didn't love him, people who came and said, well, you know, deep down inside, you know, you're a bad person. The story of Job can be summed up in the very last chapter when the Lord says, Job, why are you having a pity party about yourself? And how dare you get really close to this line of sin, accusing me of making mistakes? Who are you, Job? Where, did, where, where were you? And then he tells them this, Job, I'll restore everything if you just love your friends. Job, I, I, I'll restore everything you lost. I'll answer your prayers. 40 plus chapters, I'll answer your prayers. All you have to do is 70 times 70 on your friends. Go read it for yourself. Don't take Brother Ken's word for it. Go read the scripture. Go find out where it says very clearly, when Job forgave his friends, everything was restored in that order, in that order, in that order. No wonder that Yeshua told us that he would answer our prayers, but you gotta love people. Do y'all get this revelation this morning? It's the same revelation from last night, same revelation I've been preaching since day one. Love people, genuinely, all of them, all of them, all of them. Make a list, be honest with yourself. Who you don't like? Who is it you don't like? Who hurt you? Who broke you? Write their names down and say, Lord, help me to love them. Help me to love them. Lord, show me what love looks like. And he will, because he's just going to remind you of how much he loved you. All those things you did, all those secret things you think you did between you and God, 
Don't nobody know but you and God. And, he, and you said, Lord, please forgive me. Don't let this come out. Lord, please. And he forgave you. He didn't let it come out. He protected you. That's mercy. That's grace. That's love. All he asks you to do is love people the same way. Let it go. Oh, he could get all of us right now. He could expose everybody's sins if he wanted to, but he's not that kind of a God. He loves you too much. He loves you. He loves you with a love and a compassion that wants you to, to give him everything. And so if you want your prayers answered, go read the book of Job and see that his prayers got answered. Do y'all hear me today, Danielle? Sister Stephanie? Sister Liz, I know y'all hear me. I need a witness. I, sometimes I do wish we were in a public church, a big building. Hear y'all say, amen, Brother Ken. Y'all say it in the comments. Lord, I pray for everybody in this room once again. I will not stop praying this prayer. Lord, you coming back really soon. You coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. You coming back for people who love other people. You coming back for people whose hearts are compassionate. You coming back for people, Lord, who who helped the the person in prison, helped the person who was lonely, helped the person who who was motherless, fatherless. Lord, you coming back for the widow. You you come back for the I mean the person who loved the widows. You coming back for the person who loved the people who were in prisons, mentally, emotionally, physically. Lord, you are coming back for the people whose hearts were for the hurting and they're going to say Lord when do we ever when do we ever care for you we never saw you homeless we never saw you penniless we never saw you in a prison we never saw you crying sick thirsty hungry we never saw that and he's going to say when you treated people who were hurtful angry frustrated when you treated the sick the hungry the thirsty they were thirsty for love they were hungry for compassion they, they needed somebody in their life because they were in a prison of anger they were in a prison of frustration and you came along and you loved them anyway when everybody else in the group chat said forget them you said no i'm gonna go talk to them and see about them when everybody else in the family said well i ain't messing with her you're the one that said she's in a prison she's thirsty she's hungry she's homeless This is a narrow path. And I don't imagine everybody's going to get this. The Bible says only a few will ever get to this place of loving everybody. Everybody else is going to be surprised. Everybody else is going to get to heaven and be very surprised. All the people who really think that they're Christians are going to be surprised. Because we don't measure Christianity by saying I'm a Christian. We don't measure Christianity by playing worship music every now and then. We don't measure our Christianity by praying a verse here or there. We don't measure our Christianity by going to church on Sundays. That's not a measurement of your Christianity. He's going to look at some people when they're going to get to heaven. He said, I don't even know you. I actually never knew you. Depart. Because when I was sick, you weren't there for me. When I was hungry, you weren't there. When I was thirsty, you weren't there. When I was homeless, when I was in a prison, you weren't there. And they're going to say the same thing. Father, if I had ever seen you sick, I, I would have I showed up. I would have helped you if I ever saw you thirsty. And he's going to say that that co-worker who was angry all the time, they were hungry. They were thirsty. They just needed love. And you chose to do the opposite. That mama of yours, that daughter of yours, that cousin of yours, that uncle of yours, they, they were in a prison of anger. They were in a prison of frustration and pain. And you just blew them off. You, you just, just said they was nothing. That, 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 that other loved one, that other friend of yours, who was just starving for some, some compassion. It came out as anger. It came out as rude words. It came out as hate. It came out as in, in other ways, but guess what? I gave that person to you. I put that person in your life to love them, and you made a decision to despise them, to punt them to the side. I came for one purpose on this earth, to save souls. And before I left, I asked you to go make Gentiles. I mean, make disciples of the Gentiles. Go make disciples of all men. Go. And you made a decision. No, that person, that person don't deserve it. 
That, that person doesn't deserve God's love. They don't deserve my love. Somebody else can love them, but they're not getting it from me. I wish I could tell you that there was another way to heaven. But that's the only way. Loving God's people. Truly being saved. Having a heart of compassion. For God so loved the world. It's all based on love. He said, go love people like I loved you. That he gave his son. Some of us not willing to give up anything. We're not taking nothing. That whosoever believed in him, whether you're going to believe in what he believed in, he believed that you love people. He believed you turn the other cheek. He believed that you bless those who persecute you. He believed in the, the, the idea that if they ask you to go a mile, you go two miles. That's what he believed. He believed that if someone sinned against you, hurt you, persecuted you, you bless them. Anyone who believes in his teaching, anyone who believes in the theories, the methodologies, the understandings of God, anyone who believes, that person won't perish. That person will never die. The person who says, I, I believe the commands of God, I'm going to follow the commands of God. Well, what did he command? This commandment I give you, a brand new one, love people. That's your measurement of Christianity. He said it so clearly in the word. Why don't people preach this? He said it clearly. This is the measurement of your Christianity. Loving people who hate you. Not loving people who love you. Loving people who cannot stand you. Treating those people with a love that says, I'm waiting. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep walking in peace around you. I'm not going to be triggered or bothered. I pray the Holy Spirit is really working on you. Last night, this morning, I pray the Holy Spirit continues to heal us and help us in our journey ahead. Every morning he wakes us up, that means that he knows we're not ready. Think about that for a moment. He knows that we got some work to do, so he leaves us down here. So we can love people. And again, I would ask that you would reconcile your heart. Ask Holy Spirit to give you understanding and guidance. May you write those names down on a piece of paper. May they come to a remembrance as you're driving in your car. God, who, I, who do I honestly have a problem with? Like have that real calm. You'll never get to a place in your Christianity until you get there. Lord, show me. Show me. Elder said, I had a mom who rejected me. Pray for reconciliation because my mom passed away. No, I hear what you're saying. She's giving a testimony. This is a testimony. She said, I had a mom who rejected me. She said, you all pray for reconciliation. My mom passed away. And he healed us. Hallelujah. Kim, I thank the Lord for your testimony right here. Everybody, I don't know if you read Kim's comment earlier. She said she had three interviews last week. And the Lord said no. I'm going to read it the way that I read it in the spirit. The Lord prepared her for her actual interview coming up. The Lord gave her some practice. The Lord gave her an opportunity to kind of get some of the, the mistakes out, to get some of the, the nerves out. And so in her three interviews, the Lord said, no, those aren't the jobs for you. I got something different for you. She has three interviews this week. So I love how she said that God put me where you want. Lord, put, put Kim where you want her to be. Reconcile her heart to love people. Lisa, Lisa said, I have court this morning been fighting this case for three years with my ex. Lord, go before Lisa. Give her a favor. Help her to love anyway. Press for Edmund to come closer to the Lord over our family and finances. Maggie, trust in the Lord. That that works out the way the Lord wants it to. Roberta said, good morning, Brother Ken. Blessings, prayers for my husband. Has an appointment today. That mask that's on his bladder and for strength. Lord, we lift up Brother Henry. You already know the outcome of this. You, you already know how the appointment goes. You know what date they're going to set for surgery. You already know the outcome of the surgery. You know how Sister Roberta is going to need you for strength in all of this. 
bless the two of them. Bless their grandson who's serving. Shout out and blessings to everyone who's serving our country. To all those who have served our country, thank you so much for your sacrifice. We lift up Brother Trey and his family and his friends who are getting ready to be deployed here soon. We lift up Sister Roberta's grandson who's already deployed. Cover them. DS, send me a private message. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Yes, I will. Compassion for your children's heart. Hallelujah. Father, the fixed broken hearted, shining their light, says Sister Alisa. Hallelujah. Sister Haskins is here. Keeps kicking off. Lord, fix her internet. Hallelujah. Pray for your daughter's husband to find a job for you. Your daughter to surrender and to be free. We lift up uh, Jalisha. I think I said the name right. Bless her, Lord. Bless her family. Continue to move in their heart by your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit has to move on our heart. We lift up all daughters, all sons, Lord, move on their heart. Sandra says, pray this demon leaves my nursing home room. How mercy today. We call out that demon. You, you, you identify it and you tell it to leave in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. It has no power. There's no permission to be there. Tell it to leave. All demons and all devils leave. All authority and all power has been given to us. So leave. We have rank. We have, uh, think about the lieutenants and the colonels and the master sergeants have all those things on there. We have rank. Demons have to tremble at the name of Yeshua. We have authority. We have all the permission in the world to tell a demon not today. Sister Lulu, blessings to you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Melissa said, Lord, thank you for answered prayers. My son being delivered from drug use and starting a new job. We'll continue to keep him. Listen, we have a deliverance class or recovery class for those who want to stay on the road to deliverance healing. Whether you've gone through a loss, you've gone through an addiction, you've dealt with a breakup, a bad breakup, betrayal, abuse. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to find the road to healing. Please come learn. Learn how to stay there. Learn how to, to get some resources, some tools. Learn the, the, the psychology behind some of the pain, some of the hurt. We have class. Go up to my website. It moves from day to day depending on my kids' basketball games. It could be on a Tuesday. It could be on a Wednesday. Um, but go sign up. Go to my website link. Free class, free ebook. You'll get a free ebook. I will publish an actual soft copy uh, or paperback copy for those who want to purchase that one day. But right now, I'm just giving out the free ebook. Come to class, learn what it means to be healed. If you have a loved one who's gone through addiction, this is not rehab. This isn't double A AA or triple A, or whatever that is. You're not getting a certificate when this is over. And I'm not giving you a pen. I'm going to teach you what healing really means, what healing looks like, how to stay in it. We'll talk about the same thing sometimes over and over just so it can become familiar with you. You don't have to be hurt your whole life because of what mama did. You can come to our healing class or our recovery class and be healed. You don't have to go back to the same addiction over and over and over again. There's, there's healing. You don't have to grieve forever. You don't. Come to class. Let the Holy Spirit teach you through Brother Ken. I thank the Lord for Melissa's son. Diane said, please pray for our grandson. He's carrying his anger. We lift him up. Ask Holy Spirit to heal. We lift up Emily and her family. Lord, keep them safe. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Melissa said, continue to pray for traveling mercies for her son their friends as they drive to Odessa for a new job. Keep them safe. Lord, I trust you to put your angels around the car. Lord, keep them from distracted drivers. Lord, keep their car safe in the name of Yeshua. Johnny said he has it. 
very badly. I may have missed the first part of that. Johnny, we lift you up. We trust the Lord's not done with you. Maybe this is when I was talking about nerve damage. Nerve damage, I think Johnny served also for our country. Lord, heal all of Johnny's nerve damage, all of Sister Kelly's damage. Natalie's nerve damage, healing in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to move and Delvin Powell's issue. Lisa Lisa said it's so bad she had this surgery on her right shoulder. Heal, deliver. I'm trusting Father who has all power, who sees everything to move. Vita said, I'm asking God to pray for a companion who loves the Lord. Lord, do that for them. Jana's here. Brain tumor is giving me horrible migraines this morning. Lord, shrink it. Come on, everybody say that with me. Shrink it. Father, we trust you that you can shrink Jana's tumor. Lord, like just break it up. Well, Ali Lisa, will you reach out to Sister Jana and, and provide her some insight, some wisdom on some things that you shared with me? Jana Abraham. Jana, by his stripes you're healed. I pray right now this migraine goes away. Migraine, listen. You will not put pressure on the frontal lobe. Lord, I'm asking that you release some dopamine, some serotonin to relieve pressure. Lord, allow her the opportunity this morning, Lord, to be restored with her chemical balance, with the right nutrients in her body, the right amount of, of, of electrolytes, Lord, the right amount of magnesium. but we are trusting you to remove the tumor completely. I believe God can do it. All right. I want to thank everybody for your prayers this morning. Crystal, God bless you. For those that are new here, we do this every week, Monday through Friday, tomorrow. Just as a reminder, tomorrow morning, we will not have morning prayer. The wife and I will be on the road coming back um, getting up early uh, for one of our kids' games. And so uh, we will still have class. If you signed up for class tomorrow night, we'll still have class. For those that I'm meeting with privately or personally, um, I will still have those meetings with you on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, but we will not have morning prayer in the morning. Hallelujah. Natalie, thank you for your testimony. Mary Ann, said healing together for marriages absolutely in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach completely Mary Lou said peace was made yesterday with a sister who was unkind to me this is exactly what we're talking about and praying about the Holy Spirit gave me the words to encourage her aching heart hallelujah Lord thank you for healing power loving people loving people Martha said, thank you for praying so much for my marriage. We're in a good place, a very good place. We're going to continue to ask the Lord to keep you in that place. The devil's not happy that you're in a good place. And so we trust that the Lord to continue to cover you, that you learn that you need to, what you need to learn, that you hit the reset button. Hallelujah. Danielle said, Jacob is on here. God bless you, Jacob. Hallelujah. All right. Renee says she turned 50 yesterday. What a blessing. Congratulations to you and all the October birthdays. My wife's birthday was last Wednesday or last Thursday rather. And then Sister Pittman had a birthday in October and some of the nieces had some birthdays. God bless you, Renee. All right. I'm almost done here. I just want to read through these final few prayers. I got to get out of here this morning. Melissa said prayers for her mom. She had emergency surgery. Ali Lisa said prayers for her husband to forgive all who offended him and that God will continue to soften his heart and help him. Hallelujah. Uh, unbothered Tay, good to have you. Prayers for his family or under attack. You win those attacks every time. Lots of petty disagreements causing separation. Lord, we lift up Tay and his family. Lord, help them to love, 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 love. 
Miss Shay said, continue prayers for Mal- Jalakai, her son, and then nieces and nephews. Hallelujah, Lord, have your way. Sandra said, pray for me. Again, those demons in a nursing home, they don't have any power to be there. Shauna said, Raymond and Sadie Boyd, extra covering them and their children. Diamond said, thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough. Stephanie said, prayers for my family to get closer. Shauna said that Nikki had to resign from her job, move to New York. We prayed that the baby is healthy and that mom can deliver in peace. Mary Ann's entire family, her son, her daughter, her husband, her daughter for sobriety, doors would open her son to find a job and their marriage continued to improve. Come on, team, I need you praying. Shauna said for all the children in school, students and athletes, we pray for them earlier also. Hallelujah. All right. Father, I lift up every prayer request in this room. Everyone I've mentioned, all the ones that have been unmentioned. We pray for those who are hurting, Lord, those who just want things to get right. We pray for those who are incarcerated. Diamond said her son is incarcerated. We pray for Emmanuel Foster. I pray for my nephew. I pray for everybody, Lord, Gracie's nephew, everyone who's incarcerated, Lord, that you would bless them, keep them, protect them, watch over them. Send the right ministry teams in there, Lord, for healing power to flow. Lord, I'm asking you that everyone who put a prayer request in this this room this morning. Sherry K said, Lord, my toes are being stepped on. Sherry, we love you. This is what love looks like. Lord says, I love y'all enough to help you. We ask that you would help all of us. We come against, yeah, generational curses are just generational demons. Y'all call them curses. This is a demon. We don't fight against curses. We fight against demons principalities so they just left great great grandpa and stayed in the family line and so we rebuke them we tell them to stop they don't get to go any further they don't get to touch our families savannah peyton they're in our prayers tina lewis your mammogram all is going to go well trusting lord there's no fear i come against the spirit of fear right now fear waiting on the outcome a couple of days later kimberly Bissett praying for your daughter Tamar praying that your truck gets completely complete uh, fixed. Lord, bless them and keep them. Your daughter, Sarah, is going to pick up my daughter, Kimmy, and Octavia tomorrow. Lord, bless all of them. What a blessing, Kim. Lord, bless her family. Bless her daughters. Keep them whole. Make them well. Unbothered taste that I'm a woman. My fault. <laughs> my apologies. A small picture counted to my eyes, not my heart. Unbothered taste. Sister, I'm sorry. Tasia, I had to click your name. All right, Tasia, my fault. You forgive me? Well, bless my sister. Keep my sister. Grant her favor and success. Lord, go before her and all that she's doing. Lord, grant her your peace, your blessings, your love. And Lord, I thank you for this wonderful day of prayer. Lord, every prayer request in this room as we close today, Brother Ken has to get out of here. I'm asking, Lord, that heaven and earth may pass away, but your words, they'll remain forever. Lord, may we stick to your word, stand on your word. Lord, may you continue to give us the peace and the patience, the guidance, Lord, for humanity. Lord, we, will we, may we get to a place in our hearts where we're just like you, that we're examples, we're lights to this dark world. Lord, may we be the ones who walk in peace when everybody else is walking in darkness, Lord. May you give us the strength, Lord, to handle all that life is going to throw at us this day, this week. Lord, we pray for marriages, sons, daughters, loved ones, Lord. We cannot do this without you. Lord, everybody who's under an attack, Lord, heal them, bless them, protect them. Lord, may they fight with the sword of the spirit. Lord, everyone who's dealing with mental issues, challenges, intrusive thoughts, Lord, bipolarism, psychiatric issues. I'm asking for healing. I'm asking for healing for those who are who are troubled in their minds, troubled in their emotions. Lord, go before us today. Grant us your peace, your love, your mercy and your grace. That's our, that's our prayer. Until we meet again, may God bless us and God keep us. Listen, I got to get out of here. 
If I missed your prayer, send me a private message. Um, if this is your first time here, your family, whether this is your second year here, your family. Again, no prayer tomorrow, one day off. We'll see you on prayer Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We got class Tuesday night. You go up and check out the resources, sign up. Everything is free. Don't send me any offerings. Don't have to hit the like button. Just come and enjoy what God has given you. Listen, have a wonderful rest of your day. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you. How do I do this?